They all set to go on the mound for the Red Sox. Andro digging in for the Angels. And with a play-by-play, Dick Ember. Thank you, Adam, and good evening, everyone. And welcome around the world, as well as in the West, on our California Angels radio network. From friendly Fenway Park in Boston on a beautiful baseball night. 70 degrees as Bill Lee whips into the windup the first pitch of the game. Slow curveball down to this side. He bumps the ball. It comes out into right center field. There goes Landry around first, and he'll hold there. And camping out into the outfield, Jack Rohammer. They're flipping into the shortstop, Rolson. So a routine ground ball to the boomer, George Scott, the eight-time Golden Glove winner at first base. Almost too easy for Scotty. He boots it, and Landro's aboard. Scott just back into the everyday lineup, fractured a finger back in April and was out for five or six weeks. He's been used as a designated hitter and a pinch hitter, but this is first start at the bag. Landro leads in from first base, and Bob Gritz, the second baseman, steps in. From Long Beach, California, hitting 233, a modest four-game hitting streak. Interestingly, the first pitch thrown by Lee was a big, soft balloon curveball. Infield set for two to pitch. Swung on, roll towards third. Hopped it up with it. Only one play at first base and makes the throw in time. Now the Angels first ball hunting on Bill Lee. And the thinking by the California ball club may be that Lee has reportedly had trouble with his shoulder. Maybe stiff. And if you're going to get to him, get to him before he loosens up. The Angels have Landro at second base. And Lyman Bostock, one of the hottest hitters in baseball this month of June, steps in. In the 11 games this month, Bostock, the left-handed hitting center fielder of the Angels, has 24 hits in 11 games, 24 for 49, nearly 500. The Rangers average up to 274 after a dismal April. He almost went 0 for April. Left-hander against left-handers. Lee checks the runner second to pitch. Slow curveball is in there. And I mean slow curveball. Bostock against the Red Sox in a series at Anaheim last weekend was 8 for 13. Lee checks Landro, who dances off second base. Spins and throws, and Burleson behind the bag by four steps made the catch to take it out of center field. The wind is blowing toward that 37-foot green monster in left field, so get the ball up toward left, and you've got a chance for an easy home run tonight. A near sellout crowd at Fenway Park. They're averaging over 26,000 per home date. Lee again checks Landro, a big lead, and time called as Bostock steps out of the batter's box. Lee went through with his pitch, and it was another slow curveball. The Angels and Red Sox, two tired teams. The Red Sox arrived in Boston at 6.30 this morning from Seattle. The Angels didn't get to the hotel in Boston to about 9.30, and the bags in the room about 11 o'clock after an all-night flight from Los Angeles. Foul back by Bostock on a one-handed swing, and it's 0-2. The key to Lee with all of his junk as the players would refer to it, is to wait, try to hit the ball to the opposite field. Don't try to power it. They play by stock to full. He has in front of the monster in left, Lynn into right center, and Evans in straightaway right. Lee checks Landro, the two-strike pitch. Swinging a ground ball to the right field side. A shot up with it goes to the bag in time for the yard. So Bostock pulling the ball to the right side and right to George Scott on two convenient hops. Two gone as Landro moves into third base. Here's left fielder Joe Rudy hitting 171. And anemic average for the talented left fielder of the Angels who just hasn't been able to get that bat working for him. In fact, against left-handed pitchers, and it would figure that Rudy would devour the fourth siders, he has only four hits all season, four for 27. That figure's out at 148. Chance to give the Angels the late top of the first inning. Landro at third, Lee from the full windup, gets his sign from Fisk in the pitch. Down low, ball one, as he turned that one over, faded it low and outside. Ron Jackson, in contrast to Rudy, hitting over 400 against lefties, is on deck. Rudy, a couple of home runs, 10 runs batted in. He's always hit well here in Boston. Landro down the line at third. Lee pumps, and here comes the pitch. Swing and a line drive left center field over to Jazz. Racing, racing at five all the way to the wall. Cam slam back to the shallow left center field. Runs scores Rudy into second with a double, and the Angels lead at one nothing. Joe Rudy leans on that one and sends a line drive off the base of the wall beyond the scoreboard. Inserted into that. 37-foot center left field. 
and the Angels jump in front. It's an unearned run as Landro safe on Scott there checks in from third day. Ron Jackson hitting 357, second best in the American League. Jackson is just a point behind Rod Carew of the Minnesota Twins, and that is still another story because Rod Carew in headlines all of the sports pages of around the country as Calvin Griffith of Minnesota says that he'll be trading him before the deadline Thursday at midnight. Pitch to Jackson, high ball one. Lee didn't like the call. Word is that the Angels are one of three teams vying for Rod Carew's talent, regarded generally as the best hitter in baseball. And the trade rumors don't end there. Pitch by Lee, high blooper, very high and away, 2-0. Now we got a big thrill. Ted Wickens was my idol as a kid, and I can recall tracking behind him down Michigan Avenue from the Book Cadillac Hotel down to then Brick Stadium, trying to stay out of his presence, but still close. Line drive, base hit left field. It's going to be a play at the plate. Here comes Rudy around third. So by Yaz is going to be cut off, and Rudy holds his birthday. over and in, fielded on one hop and fired to the plate. And John McNamara, the coach of third, wisely threw up the stop sign for Joe Rudy. He would have been out by 20 feet. Jackson at first base, bad back at all, playing in vain, continues his solid hitting for the Angels. Here's Merv Rettman, the designated hitter. Batting 298, used primarily against left-handed pitching. So the Angels in air, a double and a single, have a run in in the first inning. Runners at first and third. And Rettman trying to Keep it going. Lee set. And the pitch. High ball one. But to continue the point, Williams, of course, regarded as the first man to hit Rip Stool's main blooper ball, the deepest pitch that he threw for a home run. And he connected in the 1946 All-Star game right here in Fenway Park. One of the storied moments in baseball. The pitch. Redmond takes a strike. Low curveball. One and one. That wasn't the blooper curve. That's plenty taken off it. Bill Lee, 31 years of age, former USC All-American. He is now the all-time Boston Red Sox record holder for games appeared as a left-hander. This is his 306th game in Boston, off in a graveyard for the left-handers. The pitch, blowing outside as he turned it over, and the count is 2-1 to Merv Ruffman, the veteran outfielder designated hitter for the Angels. Outstanding athlete at Ball State University in Indiana. Played football and baseball. Jackson away at first base. Scott holding him on. Rudy down the line at third. A run home top of the first inning. Lee sets and a 2-1 pitch. Slow curve is high. 3-1. and one. So Lee struggling a bit here in the first inning. Redmond backs out of the batter's box. Checks with his third base coach. Young Jim Fregelsey, the... 36-year-old manager of the Angels, youngest in the big leagues now, sends the sign to McNamara, who relays to Retman, hit or take. Might be something that works with the runner at first base as well. Three and one. They play Retman straight away to throw to first, and Jackson gets back. Lee has one of the best moves to first base. That wasn't his A move. Scott holding on Jackson. Lee leaning on the right knee as he gets the sign from Towson Fifth. And a 3-1 pitch. Inside, and the bases are loaded. Redmond to first base with a walk, forcing Jackson into second. Rudy a third. And the bullpen, bullpen phone is ringing down in the Boston. Right center field relief area, and a right-hander gets up and starts throwing in a hurry. Here's veteran Ron Fairley. The Angels with three key players injured. Three right-handed hitters are strapped a bit for the right-handed bats, and he hates to come into Fenway without, well, the services of, say, a Don Baylor, who is second in the major leagues in home runs with 15. But Baylor sidelined with a hamstring pull. Carney Lansford, the brilliant young rookie third baseman, and his swing made the order for this ballpark. He's out for three weeks, at least, with a thumb injury. And Curry Humphrey, another right-handed hitter. The catcher is out with a sore arm. So Fairley's in there for the Angels. Here's the pitch by Lee. It's in for a strike, a fastball on the inside corner. Right-hander Bob Stanley is the man loosening up for Boston. Stanley, used almost exclusively against right-handed pitching, has been up only eight times against southpaws, and he's one for eight. Here's the pitch. Low with a breaking ball, it's one and one. 
Some of the photographers taking pictures of Fairley and Ted Williams. But Fairley needs only to stay active a couple of more years and become a four-decade player, as was Williams. Ryan approaching 40 years of age. Waves that wood back and forth. Base is loaded to run in. The 1-1 pitch. Curveball hangs inside. 2-1. Some of the fans trying to help out. Played up by a rough catch. I tell you, Lee is throwing soft, softly, and a couple of those pitches you almost run up behind and bat them on their way up to home plate. Almost slow pitch. Two and one. Base is full. The pitch. Curve ball is in there. And he had barely backing away from the plate. He threw that one a little harder. So two balls, two strikes. Jim Fregosi apologizing for having fairly name on the starting lineup list. Apologizing only in that a man 40 years of age. He played yesterday, then an all-night travel, very little sleep. He'd like to rest him a day, but... That's not possible with the injury. Rudy at third. Jackson at second. Redman at first. All ready to run. Two outs. Two balls. Two strikes to count. Lee kicks, and here comes the pitch. Swing a line drive. Base hit. Right center field. Rudy scores. Here comes Jackson around third. He scores. Redman goes to third on a sharp single by Fairley, and the Angels lead three to nothing. Well, no apologies there from Ron Fairley. As he drives a bullet past Jack Rohammer out into right center field, fast fielding by Lynn to keep that one from rolling all the way to the wall. Angels with three runs in the top of the first of all the other. Reckman at third, fairly, with his 19th and 20th run batted into the season at first base. And Dave Chalk in a modest four-game hitting streak to batter. Way up on the handle of the bat, right-handed hitter Lee delivers. Outside with a tailing fastball. Chuck hitting a solid 291 for the Angels. They play him a shade to pull. Evans up a few steps in right field, quite shallow. Lee straight. And the pitch. Front it. Towards third, a good front. And they let it roll. Fair. It lands right on the foul line and refused to kick foul. The bases are loaded. Redman could not score in that the front was right there on the first base line, about 20 feet from home plate. And if Redman had tried to score, Fisk, who was hovering over the ball, would have picked it up and tagged him. Fisk was just waving a mini version of his 1975 World Series moment where he stood here at home plate and waved his home run fair to beat Cincinnati in game six. This was more of a little gentle, come on now, come on, as he just moved the fingers of both hands, bring it foul, but it didn't have much uh, action on it and rolled weakly right out of the foul line and stopped for a base hit. So the Angels have hit around in the first inning as the base is loaded again. And Brian Downing, right-handed hitting catcher, steps in. So uh, three runs home and a chance to really give Griffin a lead. Swing and a miss at a Trucci, thrown by Bill Lee. Bailey moves into second, Redmond to third. With shot at first, a halo over every base. The Angels... Threaten to blow it open in the first inning. Can't get too many runs in Fenway. That's an old song. Lee rocks back in the pitch. Low, one ball, one strike. Bob Stanley continues to throw in the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. The Angels with an error, a walk, and four hits in the inning. 31-year-old left-hander from the University of Southern California, Bill Lee, kicks and deals. High, a breaking ball, two and one. And Lee falls behind again. The action pitch, two balls and a strike. Lee has to throw strikes with the bases full. And Brian Downing in the catbird seat. He likes this one. He's giving it a gun. The outfield deep toward left. The pitch. Strike. It just caught the outside corner. Downing thought it was too far wide. Walked across the plate. Kind of scuffed at the dirt on the line that would mark the left-handed hitter's batted box. Two balls, two strikes. Downing with nine runs batted in. Here comes a 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul back out of play. That one up on the roof of Fenway. So talking about double-decking Fenway from first to round to third, adds some 8 10,000 feet. Capacity now is around 33 to 35, diminished depending on how many you can jam in the backs of the lower deck. It's a small little skybox deck, as you know, around first to third. Almost packed again tonight. As Boston comes home from a successful road trip. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a high pop-up. Out goes Brohammer. In comes Lynn. Here comes Lynn. He calls him off and makes the catch. Now the Eagles bat around in the first inning. Three on and run. Four hit, one air. Leave three. That's back for a team that is nearly awake. We'll see how 
how Boston does. Bottom half of the first inning. After a half inning, the Angels three, the Red Sox against right-hander Tom Griffin coming to bat. One. Last of the first inning, right-hander Tom Griffin of the Angels making his third start of the season. He is 0-2, a 3.50 ERA. His outing last time out, last Wednesday evening, in the second game of a doubleheader at the Oakland Coliseum was his best pitching performance as he lost to tough one to Matt Keogh of the A's, 1-0. Former National League pitcher, rookie pitcher of the year in 1969 with the Houston Astros. This is Griffin's first year in the American League. And looking for his first American League victory. Ron Jackson at third. The Angel infield around the horn has Dave Chalk at short. Bob Rick and Ron Fairley on the right side. Rudy and left, Bostock and center, and Ken Landro and right. Brian Downing behind the plate. Griffin with a 3-0 lead will face Rick Brolson, Fred Lynn, and Jim Wright. Remember, these Red Sox have not lost to a Western Division team yet this year at home. 10-0, and, and only four clubs have beaten them all season at Fenway, where they are 22-4. and four. First pitch to Brolson, very high ball one. Boy, that's some home field advantage. 22 and 4 for the Red Sox, and they've just completed a 5 3 road trip. Six full games ahead of the Yankees in the East. Griffin kicks and deals, ground ball to third. Jackson lets it go under his glove, he's hit. Rudy Deals gets it in, and Burleson's aboard on a base hit. Ron Jackson playing with a bad back, and you can tell it on that play. He didn't get down on the ball, and right under his glove. Jackson normally makes that play as he leaned to his left. Well, that low. Uh, Wilson, who has hit safely now in six straight games, is aboard at first base. And here's Fred Lynn, the center fielder. 26-year-old left-handed hitter from USC and El Monte, California. Hitting 316. Pitched by Griffin. Fastball misses outside, ball one. Well, after watching Bill Lee and all that slow, soft pitching that he offered in the first inning, Griffin looks like the fastest man ever hit the mound. By contrast, the pitch. That ball low and outside, ball two. While the Angels, as a team, flew all night from the West Coast to get here to Boston, Griffin advanced the team, and he was able to get here in plenty of time to get a good night's sleep. So he's the one rested Angel. So Lee uh, also allowed that plus, and he left the Boston club from Seattle a day early so that he might get a good night's rest here at home. Lynn? Good power, hits the ball to left field well. The pitch, swinging a high pop-up off third. Jackson and Downing to the Angel dugout, but it's going to be back about four rows. Jeff high off the concrete floor and well back into the crowd. The Angels left hand. Excellent three-game series against the New York Yankees. Drawing over an average of over 30,000 a game, and on the season now, they've averaged 20,586 at Anaheim. Boston averaging 26,012 for their home day. Throw to first and back is Rolson. Johnny Teske, former teammate of our pregame guest, Ted Williams, coaching at first base. He called him the walking man in his playing days, especially with the Detroit Tigers. Eddie Yost coaches at third. That ball on away, three and one. So Griffin gives up a base hit to Rolson and falls behind Lynn, three and one with Jim Wright, the Major League leader in home runs and RBIs on deck. 3 nothing Angels, bottom of the first inning. Griffin sets the 3-1 pitch, swinging a high fly ball to center field. Bostock waiting in position in deep center. He's got it and is one away. You see that ball carry maybe another 10, 15 feet because of the win. Oh, Bostock had a beat on it and then he gets drifting back with a small step And he took some extra batting practice before the game tonight. He leads the majors with 19 homers, 54 runs batted in, American League leader in runs, hits, and slugging percentage, and tied in triples with six. Squeeze and misses, going one. Good compact stroke for Wright. They have the tightest swing of anyone in the American League. Likened to Joe Lewis's famous six-inch right-hand punch that could destroy an opponent. Wright takes a very short swing, but such a strong man can hit it out anywhere. 
just 25 years of age from Anderson, South Carolina. Square to waste hand, deep in the box. Downing out to say something to Griffin, who looks over, checks the runner for open at first, barely holding him tight, out field deep. The pitch, low, a breaking ball, it's one and one. Rice has been playing left field with the injury to Scott, but tonight the designated hitter was Scotty back at first base for Boston. Griffin, 6'3", 210 pounds from the San Fernando Valley. Throws to first and broke in his back. Rich in second. Squeezed over toward the bag. Chalk trying to cover the hole best he can, but still it's a step up in double play position. Set swing and it's low. Griffin said, hey, what's wrong with that one? Two balls and a strike. How about that for a slugging percentage for right? 6.38. Wears 14 and bright red numerals on the back of his Boston white. The 2-1 pitch. Low again, 3-1. and one. A Griffin fell behind Lynn, 3-1, and, and got him to fly to center. Now he's behind Wright, 3-1, with Kyle Yastrzemski on deck. No place to rest in this Boston batting order. The best hitting list in the American League. Number 9 hitter Hobson, 262, 11 home runs. Swing and a high pop-up, right side. Rich waiting for it to come down as he edges out on the grass. Second baseman has it, and it's two away. For a while, Rich might have been wondering, will it come down? It wasn't hit that high. Two gone, you strip, you the batter. We're going to pause for station identification. We salute the sports voice of the San Joaquin Valley, K-O-N-G by Salia, and all of the 300 stations and ships at sea on American Forces Radio on Angels Baseball 78. Yastrzemski up. 3-0 Angels. Bottom of the first inning. First pitch is high ball one. New ball thrown out to Tom Griffin. Yes. Hitting 290 this year. Refusing to acknowledge his advancing years. Still in great shape. Ten wheels that bat in the right hand then settles off the letters and a throw to first throw in his back. Yes has three home runs and 28 runs batted in. Now 38 years of age from Long Island, New York. The pitch, curveball high, ball two. So Griffin behind the hitters, but getting away with it so far. Bill Lee did not. And the Angels scored three as they hit around with the help of an error in the top of this first inning. Griffin set. The pitch, swing a shot to second, right at Griffin. Knocks it down, picks it up, throws and gets him. Ball, handcuffed Rich. Fortunately, rolled only about eight feet away, was able to pounce on it and throw out Yes at first base, 4-3. So the Sox... No runs, one hit, and one left as skipper Don Zimmer left right and Lynn hit 3-1 and he has 2-0 and they all made out. After an inning, Angels 3, Boston nothing. The same cozy Fenway Park in Boston on a 70 degree evening. 58% humidity is a breeze about 17 miles an hour toward the left field wall. Little chance of rain tonight, but 80% prediction of the precipitation tomorrow. Bill Lee tooting up with Cloud and Fist will face the top of the angel order. Landro, Grich, and Bostock. One game played in the Major League this afternoon. Candlestick Park in San Francisco, 7,231. Saw the Giants get a one-hitter from Ed Halicki as he shut out Montreal 1-0. The Giants picked up only three hits off Steve Rogers of the Expos. Halicki 3-1 the winner. Rogers 7-6 and six the loser. Giants 1, Montreal nothing. Seattle at Baltimore underway tonight, and the Mariners fail to score top of the first inning. Landro takes the fastball inside, ball one. That's Colburn against Martinez. Colts against Moore, Minnesota, Toronto, rain delay at the start. The pitch. A strike on a slider, and it's one and one to Landro. He was safe on Scott there in the first inning. That opened the gates for the Angels to score their three runs. Milwaukee will be in Detroit tonight. Rodriguez for the Brewers out of the bullpen. It's against Milt Wilcox, Oakland, New York, Texas, Kansas City, Cleveland, and Chicago, no report. The pitch, slow curve high. National League, St. Louis and Atlanta. They're in the second inning, no score. Vukovic for the Cards and Mahler for the Braves. Chicago, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Houston. New York and San Diego, the Dodgers, North Philadelphia. There's a looping liner, Brolson, one-handed, and he goes to his right. Landro, 
Pedro, a looping line drive caught by Burleson as he left his feet, didn't take the full leap, and one-handed it to his backhand side. Bobby Grick grounded to third, his first time up. Bobby Grick. Angel Bay. It is 420, 
to the center field wall adjacent to the Boston bullpen out in deep right center, about 400 straight away center. Swing and a miss. Chase a bad ball, strike three. What? Played up by Russ Getz is saying that George Scott didn't swing at that one. And Downing can't believe that. And the Cowboy man goes to two and two instead of strike three. Unless uh, Getz is saying that that ball was foul tipped by Scott. That's the only thing we can think of. Jim Fregowski has not uh, come out of the angel dugout. And Downing continues to talk with the plate umpire Getz. Scoreboard reads the ball in two strikes. Scott took a pretty good swing not to be called out. They must have foul tipped it. Count is one and two. Griffin rocks back and here it comes. Swing and a line drive. He's right center field. Landro over to get it in right center. Slips and falls. Gets up and gets his throw in. Scott pulls at first base with a second Boston hit. Scott Landro with a double play and a double play for the Cowboys. Landro with a double play and a double play for the Cowboys. Landro with a double play and a double play for the the batter is Jack Prohammer, little left-handed hitting infielder. He's in the lineup because Jerry Remy, the second baseman for the Red Sox, has a severely sprained ankle, named this four or five game. But Prohammer has been doing a solid job anyway. He's got a 10-game hitting streak. That's his longest ever as a big leaguer, and he's hitting 299. The pitch by Griffin is just outside ball one. Prohammer wears number three on his back. Played out here is Thompson with a white start. Signed with Boston. He's a Southern Californian from Huntington Beach. The pitch. Swing with another line drive. He's hit. Right field. There goes Scott to second. Landry off of the ball. Scott's going to go to third. It's up to throw to third base. He hits him in the back. Throw gets away. And throw him and holds it first base. He would have been out. But Landry's throw hit him in the back. And Scott gambling makes it to third.
in despair as it fell over his back high up into that screen. Just like that, the game is even at three. Here's Wood Thompson batting 262. The pitch. Breaking ball for a strike. 0 and 1. As a pitcher, you just have to say to yourself, I didn't make that bad a pitch. But in this part, you can't let him hit it high to left, especially with the win. Ball up the middle, backhanded by Grich behind second. He throws Thompson out by a stride. Ball is hit fairly well. So two outs in the second inning. And the totals now are even. Three runs, four hits a side. Rick Wilson singled under Jackson's glove. His first time up. Second in the American League in doubles with 15. For his most side, hitting 227, but his bat's getting heated up a bit. He's hit safely in six in a row and moves and misses at a sinking fastball. So the crowd got what they were asking for. The home run with two men on from Dwight Evans. A three three tie. The pitch curveball over but low, one and one. Fred Lynn is on deck. Griffin rocks back, and here's the pitch. High, a fastball, two and one. Mopping his brow. Fortunately for the Angels, not accustomed to the humidity with a dry heat in California, it's not a bad night. Pop up into shallow center. Bostock in, chalk out. Bostock stops and makes the catch. Almost fell down. He put on the brake, running hard, and realized the wind was carrying that ball out. He slammed on the brake and almost fell down. Slipped, but maintained his footing and made the catch. Red Sox, three runs to tie. On three hits, no one left. After two, Boston three, the Angels three. The Red Sox are home where they enjoy the dimensions of Fenway and have just hit their 69th team home run of the season, breaking a tie with Milwaukee, best home run hitting team in the American League currently. And Bill Lee is back even at 3-3. As he warms up, he'll face Joe Rudy, Ron Jackson, and Merv Redman, the middle of the Angel batting order in the top of the third inning. This is Dick Enberg with Al Wiss. Don Drysdale off on assignment. will rejoin us tomorrow night. Producer engineer Dick Nelson. Just to complete that uh, note on a possible trade involving Nolan Ryan, there was a wire service report that the owner of the Texas Rangers, Brad Corbett, had flown from Arlington to Anaheim to visit with Angel General Manager Bussy Bavese about a trade which would involve the Rangers and Angels. They would like very much to have the native Texan, Nolan Ryan. We hear anything, of course, you'll hear about it. Let's go to the third inning. Three, three, tie. Here's Al. All right, Dick, and here's Rudy at the plate facing Bill Lee of the Boston Red Sox. Lee holding the glove and the ball in front of his chest, looking for the sign from Carl Spisky. Now wise in the first pitch to Joe Rudy is a slow curve up high ball one. He's changing speed to watch this year, and that's one reason that George Bamberger, the new manager of the Milwaukee Brewers, says that he figures Bill Lee will be the big winner this year in the Boston Red Sox. We'll have to wait and see. His record 7-3. and three. He winds and the pitch. Swing and a miss. No Joe Rudy at the plate to count even one and one. Bill Lee has been bothered by shoulder problems ever since he got into that brawl in Yankee Stadium on May 20th, 1976. And he says that he still has some degree of discomfort in his shoulder as he pitches this year. He winds. So the 1-1 pitch to Rudy is inside. And the count, 2 and 1 to Joe. Of course, the lead was out for a couple of months after that injury. And that sidetracked that 1976 season for him. He's hoping that 78 will be a different story. Making his third try when number 8, he winds. 2-1 pitch and high. 3 and 1 to Rudy. Ron Jackson on deck. Jackson currently is the number two hitter in the American League for average behind Rod Carew and just barely behind Carew because Rodney is 3.58. Rudy at the plate. He has the edge on Lee. Three and one. The Burbank native on the mound. 31 years old. 6'3", 205 pounds. He winds. And the 3-1 pitch to Rudy. Swing and a foul tap at the plate. Bounces into Joe Rudy. So the count goes to three and two. Bill Lee, lifetime against the Angels. With a seven and four record, and last year appeared to be getting on the track for Boston against everybody in the American League because in September he had a four and two mark that matched his entire win and loss totals prior to the All-Star game. 
This is also four and two. Three two pitch to Rudy. Just outside ball four with a fast ball. So Rudy draws the walk from Bill Lee. That's the second walk issued by Lee. And Rudy, the leadoff man, on in the third. Here's Ron Jackson. Jackson, his first time up with a single to left field. The Angels scoring three times in the first inning. The Boston Red Sox matching it of a three-run home run by Dwight Evans in their half of the second. So it's 3-3 three, three in Boston, Fenway Park. The Angels hitting in the top of the third. The pitch to Jackson is outside. And Paul won the run. Jackson hitting 357 with three home runs and 27 RBI. He also leads the Angels in doubles with 10. At 6 that, he's playing with the Ouchie back. Third ball, six in there for a call strike. So Ron Jackson at the plate against Bill Lee, the Olympus of USC, bends in. As the sign, here comes the pitch. Flared back and out of play off the facing of the press box to your right. So Jackson with two strikes over. The Angels hoping that they were able to generate some momentum at home before taking to the road. They have a long, long road trip in front of them. They have won four of the last six games and have three comeback wins in that. Way inside as Jackson has to lift his foot out of the way and get out of the way. They got down two and two to Ron Jackson. The Angels trying to step around the injuries that have hit them. As Connie Lansford gone for at least two to three weeks. Just barely outside with a fast ball to count pull to Jackson. So Lansford was an inch of thumb on his left hand out for two to three weeks. McAmer called up from Salt Lake City. Jackson from first over to third. Ron Fairley playing first today for the Eagles. First place, Boston Red Sox. Rulers in the Eastern Division. The Eagles a game and a half out of West. Trying to catch the open A. Starts over to first base. Leisurely throw to Big George Scott. And in plenty of time to get back to the back, Joe Rudy. Jackson at the plate, right hand hitter, slightly closed stand. Three two pitches, Rudy goes. <laughs> Jackson hits a bullet, and Lee just flips out his glove. And spears it right out the mound. Over the first base to George Scott, and Rudy was almost down to second base by the time the ball was returned to first. So a very quick double play, one three on the liner to Bill Lee, and the toss over the first base to George Scott. So Joe Rudy doubled up. The base is clean for the Angels at Merv Rutman in the third with two outs. Rutman walked back in the first, hitting 298, one home run, 10 RBI. The line of the pitch is slow, breaking ball inside, ball one. Merv, the D.H., replacing Don Baylor, and that bat will be missed in this short two-game series in Fenway Park because Baylor is tailor-made for Fenway. The pitch down low, 2-0. and Don Baylor, a dead full hitter, and he could tap through that wall all night long. But Baylor with a hamstring pull, and so he's going to be out no telling how long, hopefully just a couple of games. Swinging a high chopper at off the glove of the third baseman Hobson in the short left field. Making the turn is Rutman. He'll hang on to just simply retrieves quickly and throws back to the infield. It'll be scored in air five on Butch Hobson who tried to cut off the ball in front of Burleson, the shortstop for the Red Sox. But in doing so, took his eye off the ball. The ball hit it off his glove and in the left field. So an E5... And that is the second area of the game for the Red Sox. So man on with two men off, and now Ron Staley at the plate. Staley is one for one. He singled the center in the first. And Staley, with that hit, one of the rare times he's had a chance to come up against left-hand hitters this year. And a rare hit for him. He's hitting 125 this year against left-handers. 
Barely taking advantage of the expertise of Dick Edwards' pregame guest, Ted Williams. As he and Ted were talking outside the Boston dugout part of the game. What else? Subject hitting. So barely a left-hander at the plate. Now for Bill Lee on the bar, bending at the waist, glove on his knee. The ball on the back hit, he sets the kick and the pitch. Fast ball down low, ball one. Barely hitting with two outs, runner at first base, that's Merv Redman. The Angels and the Boston Red Sox tied in the third at three. Lee set the leg lift and the pitch. Swing and a bounding ball, backing up to Scott at first. He drops it, but it's not too far from the back, so he just tags it with his foot as he recovers. And the side retired in the third. Angels out without a hit in their half of the third. And at the end of two and a half, the score remains tied at three. That was along with Dick Enberg, Fenway Park in Boston, where the score is tied at three. The Angels with three runs in their half of the first, on four hits and one there, and they still stranded three men. The Boston Red Sox with their three in the second of the three-run home run by Dwight Evans. That was his 14th home run of the year, and that took him up to 30 in the RBI mark. He is number three in home runs in the American League this year. Fred Lynn leading off for Boston in the third, and Jim Rice and Carl Yastrzemski. Well, that Boston Red Sox line just amazing. Okay, you look at the talent they have. When they're helping, of course, Remy is out of the lineup at this particular point. Scott is back in for Boston. He has missed some action. But when you look at that lineup with all the starters in there, breaking ball inside, ball one. Many people say it's two leadoff men and seven cleanup hitters. And they're not far wrong. Fred Lynn leading off for a 1-0 pitch on the outside corner at the knees for a cold strike, 1-1. One one. Lynn, 319, over on in this game, 7 home runs, 27 RBIs. Left-hander against the right-hander on the mound for the Angels, Tom Griffin, who deals high, 2-1. and one. Lynn, a couple of stats on him. He likes to hit in Boston, likes to hit right-handed, swing and a foul. Flared off to the left side and back into the stands by 13 rows. We're down two and two. Lynn's average in Boston last year, 313. You check his breakdown on home runs. You find he had two against left-handers, but 16 against right-handers in what for him was a subpar year. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swing at a bounding ball right side. Gloved by Chris on the edge of the outfield glass, and he throws him up. So Fred Lynn put away by Bob Bridge. And here's Jim Wright. Wright pops the bridge in the first. Heading of the game, carrying a 321 average, number five in the American League. And of course, in the power category, right up on top. 19 home runs, 54 RBIs. The first pitch, breaking ball high, and the count is 1 0. Jim Wright, just barely reaching his premium years with the Boston Red Sox. Ball inside, the count 2-0. The Red Sox figure that for many years, as he now enters his late 20s and early 30s, he will contribute 35 to 40 home runs at least a year, over 100 RBIs, and probably hit 325. Swing and a one-hopper hit sharply to Gritch. He has it and throws him out. So Bob Fritch is taking care of the first two men up for the Boston Red Sox in the third, and here's Kyle Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski bounced out to Gritch in the first to end Bethany. Kyle very impressed by Boston this year, as well he should be. They're in first place by six games entering today's action. 39 and 19, that's 20 games above 500. Yastrzemski at the plate, left-hand hitter. Holding that bat off his back shoulder, high and away with a fast ball by Griffin, ball one. Kyle says this is the best Boston Red Sox team that he has seen. A 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss. One and one. Yastrzemski has had his cuts against the Angels in his career. His total, 30 career home runs against California. Now, close stance at the plate, the pitch. 
Up high with a fast ball. Two and one to Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski heads into this game with a hitting streak of four straight. Hitting with two outs in the last of the third. Fast ball missed outside. Three and one to Yastrzemski. Crowd and fist on deck. Tom Griffin looking for his first win as an angel, his first win in the American League. He's working in a tie game at three in the third. Fastball outside, ball four. So Yastrzemski rejects the bat into the bungo circle to the right of home plate. Goes down to first with a walk. For Griffin, that's the first free pass that he's issued this evening. And it brings up Carlton Fisk. Fisk in the second. Fouled out to his counterpart, Brian Downing. Hitting 267, five home runs at 19 RBI. Carlton visiting with relatives because the Angels are in town. His brother-in-law is Rick Miller. Rick married to Carlton's sister Janet. She'll spend a couple of weeks here in the Boston area and in New Hampshire visiting Carlton and her folks. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball served up by Griffin. One strike to this. Fisk is a very dedicated hitter. If you go into the batting cage for batting practice and listen to him from time to time, you'll hear him reciting verbal situations, game situations. Man on first pick, or a man on third with one out. And he'll go down the whole list of them and try to react accordingly at home plate. Gets the ball to the right side, try to get it in the air, get the runner home. So Fisk, a thinking man player outside. And the count to Carlton. One and one. The Red Sox catcher hitting with two outs. A man on. That's Jastrzemski. Issued a free pass. The first walk of the game by Griffin. And Tom, the ex-San Diego Padre pitcher, on the mound. Looking for the sign from Downing, who sets the target for the toss over the first base. And they almost got Jastrzemski. He barely made it back with a dive as if trying to reach the end of a boat dock and just barely getting on with his fingertips. That's how he was gripping the bag. The Griffin just barely missed picking him off. Now Tom Griffin now back on the rubber, turning his attention to home plate. Again, the sign by Downing and the target. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball outside part of the plate. Waved out and missed by Carlton Fisk. It's one and two as Griffin has the edge. Outfield against Fisk. Deep and around slightly toward left. Boston Red Sox and the Angels. First game of a short two-game series at Fenway Park. Another toss over to first base. And back in time, Kyle Yusemski. Ron Fairley covering at first, Bob Gritch over at second. The Angels have Chalk at short, and Jackson over at third. Downing behind the plate, time called quickly by home plate umpire Russ Getz, as it was requested by Kyle Smith. The Angels defense rounded off with Rudy in left, Bostock in center, and young Kenny Landro in right. This now, close stand. Griffin fires over the first base, and Jastrzemski back standing up. Again, the set by Griffin. He works the play. Fastball hangs high, and the count. Two and two to Carlton Fisk. Scoreboard operator having some difficulty getting the right count tonight. And so I'll put up our guest holding up his hands with the correct indication. Other throw over the first base by Griffin. And again, just trips you back. Some of the fans throwing him, but that's his job, keep him close. Now this reestablishing himself at the plate. The 2 2 pitch as the runner goes. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Carlton Fisk strikes out. So the side retired for the Boston Red Sox in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. At the end of three in Fenway Park, 3-3, Boston and California. 
Elvis Columbus, Dick Enberg, Fenway Park in Boston, where the game is tied at three. The Red Sox and the California Angels. Boston, three runs on four hits. The Angels, ditto, three runs and four hits. And for the Halos in their half of the fourth, it's Dave Chalk, Brian Downing, and then the top of the order in Kenny Landro to face Bill Lee. The Angels getting a chance to exchange greetings with their ex-teammate Jerry Remy, who unfortunately can't play in this game. He's going to be out at least three more games with an ankle that uh, he injured in Seattle. But Remy very happy to be in Boston. He, of course, is a native of Massachusetts. And he feels right at home here in Boston in a Red Sox uniform independently. Dave Chalk at the plate. The first pitch of breaking ball in there for a call strike one. Chalk has it safely in five straight. Bunted his way on in the first. And he couldn't have rolled it with his hand any better. Tries to bunt his way on again. It's a foul and rolls off the catcher, Carlton Fisk, and over towards the Boston Red Sox dugout to 0 and 2 on Chalk. Chalk laid it down the third baseline. And Fisk was trying to urge the ball to go foul, but it stopped just barely on the line. And Chalk over at first base already by the time the momentum of the ball stopped. Swing a bounding ball into the third baseman, hops and he gloves, and guns in turn. Now Dave Chalk put out 5-3 by Butch Hobson and Brian Downing at the plate. Let's pause for station identification. This is Angels Radio 78. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. SBN Angels and Red Sox, 3-3, three, three, top of the fourth, one out. Brian Downing at the plate, all set to go against Bill Lee. The Angels, with a barrage of hits yesterday back at Anaheim Stadium as they beat the Yankees 9-6. to six. 16 hits for the Angels. It looked like they were going to duplicate that in this game as they got off with four hits and three runs in the very first inning. Downing at the plate, takes ball one. But the last two times around in the second down, one, two, three. And no action in the third either. There's a slow curve at the knees for a call strike in the inside corner. Downing, this 238 hitter, two home runs, seven RBIs, 0 for 1 in this game. He flied out to center. A tapper hits back to the pitcher, Bill Lee. He twirls and throws over the first base, and there are two outs. The Angels in the fourth. Ali coming off the mound, a good fielding pitcher, toward the first baseline to glove that tapper and the twirl and throw to George Scott at first. Think of <laughs> Two down for the Angels in the fourth to the top of the order. Up in Landro. Getting left hand hitting against the left hand hitter. He's swinging and a bounding ball swept to Scott. Goes over the first base and the side retired. One, two, three. Angels going to the fourth at the end of three and a half. Three, three. The Angels and the Red Sox contrasted as they begin the first game in a long series of games for each team. The Angels with their longest road trip of the year. 14 games. The Boston Red Sox with their longest home stand of the year. It begins tonight in Fenway Park. George Scott at the plate and Jack Rohammer and Dwight Evans in the Red Sox half of the fourth. The game side three good as each team with four hits so far tonight. The Red Sox scoring in spectacular, although narrow fashion. Dwight Evans with a three-run home run into the net atop the Green Monster in left field here at Fenway Park. It was very much win aided a very strong wind blowing out toward the Green Monster. George Scott takes down low and outside, ball one. A breeze at game time of 17 miles per hour. It's blowing so strong, the big American flag is pulling at that flagpole. It's swaying in the breeze. The flagpole is fastball inside. And you can hear the reaction from the crowd here at Fenway. 2-0 to Scott. George last year involved in an amusing incident at Fenway because he hit a home run. There's just no question about it. He hit a home run to straightaway center field. But there's a perpendicular line that designates Swing and a line drive, base hit. The short shot. That is his second hit 
of the night. Two for two. Both of them line drive to right field. Scott last year against the Angels with a home run that was to the right of a perpendicular line, which separates the big green monster from a shorter wall about half the size of that 37-foot slot. But the umpire didn't see it. Scott, as he was circling the bases, was trying to tell him it's out. He was doing the umpire's call, boiling his hand, it's out, he's pointing to the wall. And he was so busy trying to tell the umpire he was wrong, he missed a chance and inside the park home run because the Angels didn't pursue it in the outfield. That happened last year. First pitch is in there at the knees, outside corner, quick call strike one to Jack Brohammer. Brohammer, a hot hitter. The 11 straight game. 299 coming in. One home run and 10 RBIs. And he has a single so far tonight. That back in the second. He and Scott brought home by the three run home run by Evans. Swing and a miss. This time that pitch. And a count on two. Rohammer getting a chance to play because of the injury to Jerry Remy. The strain of Remy's ankle, the slight twisting of it. So Jack Rohammer up against Tom Griffin, who kicks and delivers way outside, and Downing has to scramble off to his left to spear that one. George Scott leading off the fourth with a single. The game tied at three. Fenway Park in Boston, last of the four. Jack Rohammer at the plate. The count, one and two. Griffin sets and delivers outside, two and two. A check of the scoreboard, other action today. In progress, Baltimore and Seattle, and the Orioles lead three nothing. They have played three. Eddie Murray with his 10th home run of the year. That's the difference in the game. It came in the third with two men off. So Murray, a three-run home run. Griffin fires over to first base, and George Scott, obviously no base stealing threat. Now with all the luggage he's carrying, he's back in plenty of time. 2-2 two -two pitch, inside, Johnny can't find it, they'll stop the second base, he'll cruise in. And he scored a wild pitch. But George Scott in scoring position represents the potential tie-breaking run in the fourth. Elsewhere on the Major League scoreboard, Detroit leads Milwaukee 3-2 to at the end of an inning and a half. There have already been three home runs in that game. Tom Griffin, who was victimized by Dwight Evans in the second for a three-run flag, stands to the mound. Check George Scott, the pitch, swinging a tapper foul to the right of home plate. Count full on Jack Brohammer of the Red Sox in the Detroit-Milwaukee game. Job with his ninth home run. Thompson is 15. Thomas is 13. So Jason Thompson goes into a time for second place with John Bailey in the American League home run parade. Scott for the conservative lead. Now he edges off a second. The three, two, three, five, six. Right-hand hitter, the pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen. The 
and down one and one. Evans with that home run is in safely in six straight games. The Angels will try to turn the double play to their double play depth. They'll give up the run. Scott at third. Check swing, it's down low. And the count two and one. Back about three steps from the outfield grass to short is Dave Shaw. Rich, about four steps from the grass over at second base. Both pitched in toward the middle. Hoping that Evans will hit it on the ground and out in the air. The pitch. Swing and a check swing off the facing of the press box. To your right. Gloved on the fly by Matt, actually on the rebound. Two and two. The boomer, George Scott, at third. Jack Brohammer at first. Barely holding Bro Hamburg first. Jackson playing off the line and back of the bag at third. The middle of the infield double play depth. So Scott will score on a ground ball hit toward the middle. The pitch. In there for a call strike three. A slider by Tom Griffin caught Evans looking. So the scales balancing as Evans with a three run home run in the second. And now a pound of flesh for Tom Griffin in the fourth as he catches Evans looking. That's the second strikeout tonight for Griffin. Now that's only one out in the fourth for the Boston Red Sox, and it's Butch Hobson, the number nine hitter at the plate. Hobson with 11 home runs and 35 out of the eyes, and he's hitting ninth with this power-packed Boston Red Sox lineup. Holds that bat high, swing and a miss, a high fastball served up by Griffin. Hobson holding that bat high, almost a mirror image of Carl Yastrzemski when he does that. 262 to go along with those 11 home runs and 35 ribbies. Down low, one and one. Hobson, the free swinger. Well, he'll pick up those home runs. He'll also pick up strikeouts. Got a club record of 162 last year. Activity now in the Angel bullpen. Ken Brett throwing. Breaking ball outside. Two and one to Hobson. Hobson last year, 30 home runs for the Red Sox. 112 RBI. Oddly enough, no home runs against the Angels. They take on just about everybody else in the American League. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a bounding ball. Hit to the short shot. But in his haste to make two, he got none. And the Red Sox are in front. So George Scott scores. It's 4-3 Boston. At second base, Jack Rohammer. Hobson safe at first on the air by Dave Chalk. And the top of the order up in Rick Burleson. Burleson one for two. Waits at the plate. Down low ball one. Sox with a great break. The Angels should have gotten out of this inning on a double play. But Dave Chalk couldn't find the handle. He's charged with an air and a run score. And his teammate, John Griffin, still on the hook. Fourth inning, 4-3 Boston. Burleson waits. The pickoff attempt not made to second base as Bobby Grick running over toward the bag in second. Griffin whirls, stepped off the rubber but did not throw the second. Throw hammer at second. Hobson at first, the pitch. Outside, breaking ball to Burleson. Two and oh to Rick. Burleson with only three home runs, but he hit number three yesterday from Downey, California. As a six-game hitting streak goes. One for two in this game. He waits, close stands, right-hand hitter. Swing a roll. against the wall, throws back to the infield. One runner will tag and go to third. Rohammer at third base, remaining at first, Butch Hobson 
on this towering deep fly ball. It's a straightaway center field and the warning track, the base of the wall by Rick Burleson. The runners at first and third now with two out. It's Griffin getting the advantage of the deep center field area in Fenway Park, although that was not the deepest part of the ballpark. You shade around toward right center field, and there's a little corner out there that's 420 to your earth. Well, that one was 20 deep. Red let up. Red, 0 for 2. He waits. Runners at first and third. Two out. Down low. Downing with a nice stop. Red Lynn, 319, 7 home runs, 27 RBIs. And we said hits well in Boston. And hits right hander as well. Waves the wood back and forth. The pitch. Swing and a foul back. Caroms off the screen. Back to the ball board behind home plate. One and one. Tom Griffin trying to fight his way out of it without any more damage being done than one run. And he should have gotten out of this inning with no one scoring. But Dave Chalk put it a double play ball. Griffin set. The leg left hand to pitch. Check swing. Looper that is hit. Foul by inches. Wide of third base. Jackson going over trying to back in. It would have been a very difficult play for him. So the Angels lucky the ball was foul. One and two. Lynn checking his bat just to the right of home plate. Now tapping it against the soles of his shoes, cleaning his spikes. Digging back in, left-hand hitter against the right-hander Griffin. Butch Hobson out of the air over to first base. Jack Rohammer at third. Tossed over to first base. And back in time, Butch Hobson. Angels and Red Sox. Boston leads 4-3. Key just barely did miss it 2-2. Two and two. Already a couple of steps to the warning track in front of that scoreboard on the Green Monster in left field. Boss Stock, straightaway center. Kenny Landro, off the line, well off the line in right. Swing a high fly ball. Hit the left field, up in the wind. It is Fred Lynn, the big blow in the fourth, 
And at the end of four complete in Boston, it's 7-3 Red Sox. on the Dick Ember, Fenway Park in Boston with the Red Sox are on top by four. Seven runs, seven hits, two errors for Boston for the Angels. Three runs, four hits, and one costly error. It's the top of the fifth, and here's Dick. All right, now you can't give the Red Sox a five-out inning, which that missed uh, double play amounted to, and they took advantage as they have 300 earned runs to match the Angels' 300 earned runs. They scored in the first inning off Bill Lee. Hasn't allowed a hit since. Bobby Grick will try to start things. Takes a through ball for a strike. Grick is down to the third and line to short. So Lee down 3 nothing after one. Sees his teammates tied in the second on Dwight Evans. Three-run homer. And Fred Lynn plus an air gets four home in the fourth inning. Low curveball grounded foul. Just, just couldn't wait that long and fouled it into the Eagle dugout. Two strikes to count. After giving up three runs on four hits plus an air that made all the runs unearned in the first inning. The Angels do not have a hit sense off Lee. Looking for his eighth one of the year. 6'3", 205 pounders, swings into the windup, the two strike set. Swing and a line drive foul into the first row box seats beyond the ankle dugout. Sellout crowd, Fenway Park in Boston, where the Red Sox, of course, this team is built to fit this park with a lot of right handed power, they have taken a 7 to 3 lead as they shoot for their 23rd home win against only four losses. The windup and the pitch outside as he faded that one off the corner. Lee and Fisk, the battery. Thompson, a third. Brolf from the shortstop. Rohammer and Scott on the right side of the infield. They each have two hits apiece. Yaz and left, Lynn and center. Evans and right. The pitch. Swing and a foul. Grit just did get a piece of a high curveball. Grit, Bostock, and Rudy in the Angels' fifth inning. We told you Connie Lansford, the Angels' talented young rookie third baseman, will be out for probably three to four weeks with a sprained thumb, there's ligament damage. They've called up Dave McAmer, the Pacific Coast League's leading hitter. The pitch, well, curve ball, and it's a high fly ball to the shortstop. Little soft fly ball to Rick Burleson, who pedaled out on the grass and made the catch. And there, Case again, of the angel hitter not able to wait long enough for it. He hit it off the end of the bat. He just couldn't wait. And that's part of the style of Lee and when he gets it going. that you just can't figure that he can throw it that slowly. One out, Lyman Bostock is grounded twice, to short and to first. Lee pumps, left-hander against left-hander, the pitch. Slow curve is in there. The Angels got their run in the first inning on an air, Landro save on Scott there. A two-out double by Rudy Chase Landro home. Then Jackson single, Redmond walked, and fairly hit a bases loaded single to right center. High with a fastball is Lee. It's one and one. Singles by Scott and Brohammer and Evans fly ball home run into the screen and left tied it for Boston in the second inning. Then singles by Scott and Brohammer and Aaron charged to Chuck got one run in in the fourth. There's a line drive, base hit left center field. That's 12 games in a row now for Bostock who turns first and holds as Jazz gets his throw into the infield. Lyman Bostock getting 274 to start. Singles to the left center field and here's Joe Rudy. And, of course, one swing, you get yourself right back in the ball game at Fenway, and Joe Rudy's a man who has that potential. He doubled off the base of the wall in left center field his first time up to drive in a run and walked in the third inning. Settles in. Bostock with one out at first base. Scott holding him on. Brohammer is second, and Brill from the shortstop will squeeze toward the bag looking for the double play. Hopson guarding the line deep at third. Lee straightens. Left hander comes to the plate, and it's a line drive base hit into right field. Bostock will move to second and hold as Evan hustles the throw in, and the Angels have their back to back singles by Bostock and Rudy with one out here in the fifth inning. Joe Rudy, that's the kind of Rudy that'll start hitting like he knows he can. Guy will go to the opposite field with that outside pitch. 
So Ron Jackson comes up. He has a line single to left. And with Rudy at first base in the third inning, hit a bullet back to the middle. Appeared to be a sure base hit. And Lee, in self-defense, threw up the glove, caught it cleanly, and doubled up Rudy easily. One of the fastest double plays you'll ever see. It was just the sound of mitt was whack, whack. And it was uh, Lee catching it and then throwing to Scott. Curveball in there. So he's starting almost every hitter with a big, slow curveball to set up the rhythm of all the rest of his pitches. 7-3, to three, Boston leads. Two on, one out. Swing and a ground ball toward the hole. Hopson has it. Goes to second for one. Brohammer back to first. They throws it into the dugout. And a run will score. So the Angels get a break as Rudy breaking up the double play. And it would have been two. Went into Brohammer. And it was a legal slide. In some of the major league games this year, they've called the double play when that runner goes out of the baseline. So the Angels get a break there. A run scores Bostock. And you can credit Jackson with a no RBI. He's safe at second base. It's an error all the way. Fielder's choice. E4. Bostock scoring from second base. And Jackson has second in scoring position for Merv Rutman as the Angels trail Boston by three, seven to four. It's a big run at second base. Rutman has walked and safe on an error by Butch Thompson. The Red Sox committed their third error of the game. But set by Lee. Checks back at Jackson. And here comes the pitch. Swing and a ground ball toward the hole. That's going to be backhanded by Burles and he plants, he throws, and he gets it. Oh, wow. Bergosi just turns, goes back to the dugout. A fine play by Burleson, deep in the hole. He's got a great arm and used it royally to throw out Redman by a whisker at first base. That was the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half innings in the book. As the Angels score a run on two hits, one error, and leave one. It's Boston seven and the Angels four. New pitcher for the Angels now is Ken Brad, who started his major league career in the Boston Red Sox organization, signed out of El Segundo, California, the older brother of Kansas City's sterling third baseman, George Brett. Ken warms up with Brian Downing and will face Jastrzemski, Sisk, and Scott in the bottom of the fifth inning with a score Boston 7, the Angels 4. Tom Griffin goes four innings, allows seven runs, four of them earned, seven hits, walk one, struck out three. And Griffin has to be talking to himself down in the clubhouse at the moment because he was runners at first and third in a tie game in the bottom of the fourth inning at three. He struck out Evans and then induced Thompson to hit what appeared to be a double play ball at shortstop. He would have been out of the inning. The game still tied at three. Instead, Scott booted the ball. The Red Sox got the two extra outs and immediately he converted them into four runs. One of those came home on the Hopkins on ball air to Chalk, and then a three-run blast by Fred Lynn, actually a fly ball that he just lifted to left, and the wind blew it oh, about five feet above the top of the wall into the screen. Jastrzemski up, and the pitch by Brad is rounded toward second. In between hop by Gridge, almost went through his legs. He throws him out the three steps. Now, Yance has rounded hard to second walk, and now that easy tap to Bob Gridge. Carlton Fisk has fouled out and struck out. Checking the scores in the National League, Atlanta leads St. Louis one to nothing after five. Chicago two, Cincinnati nothing in the bottom of the fourth at Cincinnati. Pittsburgh scored time for the first at Houston. Phillies won, Dodgers nothing after three in Los Angeles. Lazinski, he's been on a chair, his 13th home run of the year. The windup, the pitch by Brett. This gets a high fly ball to center. That goes by Doc. He has room. Makes the catch, fading away on the warning tab. Almost misjudged that. At the last moment, had to leap up and make the play over his shoulder as the wind carried that one well. And the flag out in left center field is starting out toward that green monster as the wind blowing. Oh, it gets around 20 miles an hour. Blowing it hard now to dance all night long. George Scott, two line drive singles, scored two runs. In fact, he is ninth at both rallies, the three run rally in the second and the four runs in the fourth. 7-4, Boston, the pitch, blown inside for Brett. Mets are playing at San Diego tonight, no report, and this afternoon the Giants on a one-hitter by Ed Hillicky. Shut out Montreal, 1-0. Giants got only three hits in victory against Steve Rogers. There's a change in there for a strike, 1-1. One one. 
White Sox lead Cleveland one nothing after one in Chicago. Texas has a one nothing lead at Kansas City after one and a half. Outside, ball two. Two and one to George Scott. Willie Randolph has hit his second homer of the year for the Yankees in the third to give New York a one nothing lead against Oakland after three. The pitch, curveball, fouled out of play. In that game at Yankee Stadium, Ron Guidry is trying to win his 10th game without a loss this year. Little left-hander from Louisiana is 9-0. Detroit leads Milwaukee 4-3 after 3. Minnesota-Toronto not underway. Rain up in Toronto. And Baltimore is still leading Seattle 3-0 after 5.5. The pitch by Brett. Swing and a miss and a high fastball. And Ken Brett restores the order in the fifth inning as the Red Sox go down 1-2-3 for the first time in the game. And after 5 at Fenway. Red Sox... Seven, Angel, four. Manager Don Zimmer of the Boston Red Sox with Bill Lee, the official pitcher of record after five innings, has made a change, bringing in big right-handed Bob Stanley from the Boston bullpen. So the line on the two starters, Tom Griffin of the Angels, four runs, allowed four innings, rather, allowed seven runs, four of which were earned. Seven hits, one walk, three strikeouts. Bill Lee went five innings, four runs, all unearned. Six hits, walk two, and struck out none. Brian Staley will be the first man that Bob Stanley faces. Stanley, an excellent record in 18 appearances, has four wins, only one loss, three saves, and a 2.80 ERA. Big guy, both a natural sinker. As a starter, beat the Angels on a in a fine ball game here last summer. Don uh, Stanley liked him in the bullpen where he used as his uh, middle reliever and in long relief. Stanley knocked in two runs with a single back in the first inning. Pitched by Stanley. Swing and a drive into right center field. Hit pretty well. Evans and Lynn on their horses. It's Lynn racing. Leaping and he can't get it. It's off the wall. Oh, Lynn hits the wall very hard and into second goes Stanley with a double. And let's hope Fred Lynn is okay as he went for that one-handed catch. He slammed into the padded barrier in front of the Boston bullpen, and he hit it hard. He's on his knees and is conscious and shaken. Hopefully, not a serious injury. Over to attend to him is the right fielder, Dwight Evans, and now the Boston trainer gets there is Lynn. Shoulder, that's like a, a wide receiver going on a... 20-yard hook pattern, and as he goes up to catch the ball, somebody comes up from behind and just slams him full bore, and Lynn Shaken, former outstanding football star himself, and trying to gather his faculties as the Boston Red Sox bullpen anxiously watching, he steps, steps to his feet now, and apparently is okay, will stay in the game. back to his defensive position in center field by the trainer. Boy, that's good news. You hate to see anyone in this game get hurt, much less a superstar like Lynn. And he's taking his right arm as he goes back to position. It appeared he was trying to catch that ball as he raced from center field into right center, and he's trying to backhand it, leaping try, just missed the ball, and then his next step took him right into the wall in front of the Boston bullpen. So fairly at second base with a double, he's two for three as he greets Stanley on his first pitch. Seven to four, Boston in the sixth inning. Barrel right side, Scott to his right to field it. Stanley covering, the flip is dropped by Stanley, and Chalk is safe. Fairly goes to third. So that's going to be the fourth error of the game for Boston as Stanley drops that underhand toss from George Scott. Credit. Scott with an assist, but the error goes to Stanley. The Angels, friendly with no up, bring the tie run to the plate. Seven to four score. Unusual totals up there for the Boston Red Sox. Seven runs, seven hits, and four errors. The Angels taking advantage of a couple of them to score four unearned runs off Bill Lee. Brian Downing with runners at first and third, no one up. Right-handed hitting catcher is flied out and tapped to the mound. Stanley looks in, gets his time to Calvin Fitz. Runners lead from the corner is the pitch. Outside with a shot on fastball. Hobson gets off the bag at third. 
Burleson and Rohammer looking for two up the middle. Scott anchored at first base, holding on Chalk. The outfield is shade to pull for Downing. The pitch. Breaking ball in there. One and one. Downing the wide open stance. And as the pitch is made, steps even more down that third baseline. And that curveball caught the inside corner. Stanley settles at the waist. The one one pitch. Swing and a foul into the glove of catcher Calvin Fisk. It's one and two. Good fastball. Brought that in at the knee. Stanley is just 23. Born at Portland, Maine. He's 6'4 and 205. As is signed, the one out runners at first and third. The pitch. Shot foul. And again, Downing just got a piece of it. And that's where Stanley is rough. If he can keep, keep the pitches down there around the knees with his natural sinker, he's going to throw a lot of ground ball. And in this ballpark, that's a bonus. Infield will gladly give up a run to turn a double play. Seven to four, Boston. Going out of the Angel sixth inning. Chalk at first. Barely a third. The pitch. Swing on the ground ball. Should be two. Burleson has it. Goes to Brawlhammer. Back to first base. Double play. Run scores. It's seven to five, Boston. Well, that's the difference in the game now. Each team has had a double play ball with first and third. And no out or one out. The Angels up theirs, and the Red Sox went on to score four. Now Boston turns its double play, and the Angels get only one run. 6 4 3. Nicely turned. Two outs now in the sixth inning, a 7 to 5 score. And the Angels pecking away at Boston's lead. Here's Ken Landro, left handed hitting right fielder. He's 0 for 3, facing the southpaw Bill Lee. First chance against Stanley, and he takes it low and inside ball one. Lined up by Stanley. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a foul off the plate umpire's chest protector. It's one and one. The Landro hitting 247 at the start. Caps in California and Arizona State University. Landro, the minor league player of the year. Last season, highly heralded youngster. The pitch outside with a fastball. Stanley's throwing well. Two and one the count. Angels with three in the first, one in the fifth, now one in the sixth. Base is empty, two out, and the 2-1 pitch. Low, three and one. On deck is Bobby Gritch. It is an absolute must if you're going to pitch for Boston or pitching in this ballpark as an opposing hurler that you throw strike. You cannot afford to walk in at Fenway. The 3-1 pitch. Inside ball four. Get started up with the right arm and said, nope, that's not good enough. And here comes Don Zimmer to the mound. Stanley walks Landro, and again, the Angels have the tying run at the plate. Bobby Gritch, the hitter. And Boston's going to get someone else up in the bullpen. Could be their eighth right-hander, Bill Campbell. It is a right-hander. Zimmer talking to his battery of Stanley and Fisk. Stanley, the pitcher, is coming down at his feet and pawing away at the dirt on the mound as he... Gets the word from the skipper. Here now Josh back to the first base Red Sox dugout. Rich in the game is 0 for 3. Ground to the third, line to short, and a soft liner to short. Two men throwing, Tom Bergmeier, a left-hander, and Dick Drago, a right-hander. Stanley looks in, gets his side. Rich with one swing to tie it up. It's 7 to 5, Boston. We're in the sixth inning of a wild one to start this long road trip. The pitch in there, a good fastball. Ford right down the middle. Angels two in Boston, two to Baltimore, three in New York, three Minnesota. Cap it off with a four game series in Texas. The set. Check the runner to pitch. Swing a ground ball, weakly right side, but that's going to twist into right field for a base hit. Rohammer out in shallow right, picks it up, he's going to throw to first. It is not in time. So it gets away from Austin. In the second base goes Rich, and the Angels have their tying run in throwing position. And I think we're going to have another error. A little twisting ground ball that got by Scott. Rohammer playing way over near second. Finally caught up with the ball as it was dying in the grass in shallow right field. He had no play at first base, but alertly noted that Landro running all the way was going to try to make it to third and made a good throw. I believe that had Landro had the ball gotten to third baseman Hobson, but I think the throw hit Landro. And no error is charged. Rich goes to second on the throw. Credit him with a base hit. The second on the throw. Landro to third. They're going to walk Lyman Bostock intentionally to load the bases. 
Angels with a run home. And Landro at third, Grits the tying run at second in a 7-5 game. And Stanley, rather than pitch to the red-hot Lyman Bostock, is going to go against Joe Rudy, who is two for two today, a double, a single, and a walk. Oh, my. <laughs> we said at the very start of the first inning when the Angels scored three, now that's just a drop in the bucket. That's just flipping a penny in the pool. If you play at Fenway, you're going to get out the silver dollars because the stakes are high. It's easy to score runs. Rudy up there. A halo over every base with Bostock at first, Rick standing at second, Landro at third, Boston seven, the Angels five. The Angels, with help of some sloppy fielding plays by Boston, have some run and run. Boston, six of their seven runs on two swings of the bat. Three run homers from Dwight Evans and Fred Lynn. How Rudy would like to tie in one. He settles in. Infield, back in all positions except for Hobson guarding the line behind the bag of third. Stanley into the windup. Here comes the pitch. Swing the ground ball through the middle. Into center field. A base hit. Here comes Landro. Rich is around third. He scores. And the Angels have tied it 7-7 on Rudy's third hit of the game. Now they pitch around Bostock to get to Rudy. There's Rudy coming into the game batting only 171. But maybe finding that excellent hitting stroke of his tonight with a double a walk and now two shot singles. That one went right back through the middle. Stanley reaching for it was under his glove as Rudy has driven in three runs. And now the Angels have missed his bat. We're back in a new game at 7-7. Don't you dare go away. They both kicked their extra points in Boston. Here's Ron Jackson swinging a high fly foul looking down onto the roof in left field and with the win that one had home run depth. Jackson has single in scored, lined into a double play and safe on a fielder's choice. He's the eighth man to bat in the inning. And only the double play turned by the Boston infield has saved the Red Sox from more angel run scoring here in the sixth. Runners at first and second. The pitch. Swing and a chopper towards third foul. John McNamara will field it in his coaching box. Flip it to the third base umpire for examination. Last talk in second. Rudy at first. A 7-7 tie. The Angels about hit the Red Sox 9-7. So both starters, Tom Griffin and Bill Lee, will not figure in the decision tonight. The game belongs to Stanley and Brett. Jackson trying to give the Angels the lead. They play him deep toward left. The pitch. Hits him in the left knee. And Jackson comes up a hobbler. Now the bases are loaded as Ron Jackson, already playing hurt with a bad back, is hit just above the left knee with a fastball. And an 0-2 pitch. Stanley didn't want to do that. So the Angels again have the bases loaded. Here comes John Zimmer, and that's going to be all for Bob Stanley. So as the pitching change is made by the skipper of the Red Sox, let's pause for station identification from Boston Mass. This is Angels Radio 78. The Angels 7, the Red Sox 7. Bob Stanley is out, and Nick Drago is going to come in to pitch to the Angels' Merv Redman with the bases loaded. Jackson, hit by that fastball, is okay, walking off the sting as he maneuvers himself down the right field foul line. Getting very little sympathy from first baseman George Scott. Rudy to second. Bob Scott, the tie-breaking run, stands to third as ex-Angel Nick Drago brought in in a Boston golf cart, adorned with a Boston Red Sox hat. Is at the covering. Drago will step out and a base is loaded jam. First, let's go on out. All right, Dick, five more family days upcoming at Anaheim Stadium this season, and all box seats, remember, on these special evenings and afternoons are at half price for these five days. Now, the first one to bear in mind is Monday, June 26th. That's a 5 10 p.m. game with Kansas City, the Western Division champion defending Royals. They open a four game series with the Angels, and the first game is June 26th. And that is the first family date upcoming. Now, two more family dates upcoming in July. July 17th for the Detroit Tigers. And you know all the young good hitters on that team, like Thompson and Cap, and of course a veteran like Rusty Staub. July 31st, it's the Oakland A's, the surprise team in the American League, the Peach Fuzz Gang. Then on August 15th, the Boston Red Sox, the team you've been hearing about tonight. September 4th, the Texas Rangers. So some top gate attractions upcoming. And remember that on Saturday night, first tickets are at half price. That's tough to tell. Dick? 
Now let's run down the scores as Drago warms up with catcher Calvin Fitz. Seattle has just scored four runs in the top of the seventh inning. As John Hale has hit a three-run homer for Seattle. A little problem with our Western Union. Ken Singleton hit a solo homer in the sixth inning, so Baltimore has at least four and Seattle has four. In the seventh at Baltimore, the Orioles have won nine in a row. Ten in a row. One of those two. Nine or ten in a row. <laughs> Minnesota at Toronto. Goals against Moore. Game has not started. It is a 5-4 to four lead. Milwaukee at Detroit in the bottom of the fifth. Baltimore with a 10-game winning streak. The Yankees have scored again on Greg Nettle's 10th home run of the year. And after five innings, Ron Guidry going for his 10th win without a loss. Leads Oakland 2-0 in New York. Texas 3, Kansas City 1. Bobby Bonds has hit his 7th home run of the year with a man on in the third inning at Kansas City to give the Rangers a 3-1 lead. Bonds has just signed a $2 million contract yesterday, reportedly for 5 to 7 years. So he's a happy Ranger and a very wealthy one. And completing the American League scoreboard, the White Sox have a 1-0 lead at home against Cleveland after 3. Rettman settles in. The Angels are playing short 3 men because of injuries, so... That takes away some of the maneuvering that Jim Fragosi can do. So it's right-hander against right-hander, bases loaded. Drago sets, and the pitch. Way outside, ball one. Redman is walked safe on an air, and Burleson, recall, went deep into the hole to throw him out on a close play. That was in the fifth inning. The Angels have hit around for the second time in this game, scoring three runs on four hits in air in the first inning. They have three more runs here in this inning. Uh, three hits in an air and a couple of walks. Base is loaded, a 7-7 tie. Drago to the plate. Inside corner, Rettman jumps back, but it caught the edge. Rettman has a grand slam home run this year for the Angels. His only homer. Everyone becomes a power man in this ballpark, especially if you hit from the right side. Five stock at third. Rudy a big lead at second base. Jackson ready to go from first with two outs. Drago, veteran right-handers, 1-1 pitch. High and inside, 2-1. and one. Rettman checking his swing as he collapsed to his left knee. Drago has done a good job with Boston. 1.66 earned run average. He saved six games, tops on the club. That's tough to do when you've got a Bill Campbell out there. He's won two and wants only one. Trying to pitch out of a bases loaded jam, and here comes the action pitch. Two and one to Merv Rettman. Drago has his sign. Low target. Here's the pitch. Rettman takes strike two. A slider, and Rettman unhappy with himself. Took a good pitch. He knew it. Two and two. We're in the sixth setting, a new game at seven. Wind blowing briskly toward left field. Yaz back a couple of steps from the warning path. Lynn in deeper left center. Evans back and right. A two-two count. Ray goes slowly at the waist. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball three, and that builds the drama right to the founding point where Drago has to throw a strike or the Angels get a run. And Rutman has to protect the plate, hoping he can get a hold of something and put the Angels in front. Angels three in the first, Red Sox three in the second. Red Sox four more in the fourth to make it seven to three. Angels one in the fifth, and they scored three here in the sixth to tie. And now three and two the count. And the pressure, yeah, who's it under? The batter or the pitcher? Most would say it's Drago who has to throw a strike. Rettman waves the wood back and forth. Drago settles slowly at the waist. 3-2 pitch. Swing a looper into left center field. Here comes Lynn in a hurry. He makes the catch. There's a the case where the wind actually hurt the Angels because the ball was not hit hard at all, but the wind carried it out to Fred Lynn, who galloped into shallow left center field to make the catch. The Angels settle for three runs, three hits, one error, and they leave three. Middle of the sixth, a 7-7 seven, seven tie. The Cleveland Indians have signed five more players who were recent selections in the summer free agent draft. The signings bring to eight the total of players in the free agent draft who are now under contract. Signed with third baseman Pete Peltz, the ninth-round pick from Clemson University, pitcher Bob Husey, a 13th-round selection from St. Xavier, Illinois College, pitcher Jarrell Strotsheim, a 15th-round pick from Olympic Fields, Illinois, pitcher Jim McBride, a 19th-round choice from Jackson State, and second baseman Ken Gilmore, a 27th round selection from Troy State University. The Minnesota Twins announced the signing of left-handed pitcher Chris Deason, the club's 22nd choice in last week's draft. 
Eason will report to Melbourne, Florida for two weeks of training and then will pitch for Elizabethtown of the Appalachian League. The Boston Red Sox signed seven more free agents selected in last week's draft. Five of those signees have been assigned to Elmira of the Class A New York, Pennsylvania League. A wild one at Fenway Park in Boston as the Red Sox open a long homestand and the Angels start a long two-week road trip. Trying to figure out the hundred runs the way we did in that sixth inning. The Angels scored two more hundred runs and now six of their seven runs on earth. Ken Brett, it's his ball game. As he faces Jack Rohammer, Dwight Evans, and Butch Thompson, the lower third of the Boston batting order. The Angels have left eight in on base, Boston only two. That'll tell you part of the story as the Red Sox, with runners on, have come up with a big blow. Dwight Evans, a free run over, Fred Lynn the same. Red pumps the pitch. Swing and a miss to Rohammer. Angels going three in the first, leaving the bases full, and three more in the sixth to tie, but the bases were drunk when Redman loops the fly ball to center. Inside is Brett, one and one. National League update. Atlanta two, St. Louis nothing after six and a half in Georgia. Wind up by Brett, one one pitch. Curveball hit the left center field after tough play for Montag. A long run going back, 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 back. It's over. That's it by Rudy. Rohammer has found new life in Boston. We just did a 242 50 hitter most of his life, but a 300 hitter with a red shot to be doubles to left center field. As the Red Sox come right back against Ken Brett. That's their eighth hit and brings up Dwight Evans. A three-run homer, and he struck out. Other National League scores, White Sox two, Cincinnati nothing after five. In Cincy, Pittsburgh leads at Houston one nothing in the third. Phillies two, Dodgers nothing, bottom of the fifth in L.A. All runs by Rosinski is 13th, and Smith is in his ninth for the two goal scores. This afternoon, the Giants beat Montreal one nothing. New York and San Diego no report. Nick Devin. Way outside, and a fine stop by Brian Downing. Rohammer off second base. Ken Brett, left-hander against the right-hander. Dwight Evans, a 7-7 tie in the sixth inning. Here's the pitch. On the outside corner, 1-1. One one. Brett's last strike was Wednesday night, part of the doubleheader at Oakland. And pitched very well. Uh, just a couple of hits and seven shutout innings. He is two and three on the year. ERA up there at 5.68. Check Brohammer second. Here's the pitch. Curveball foul to the screen. Evans trying to go to right field with it. It's one and two to the Boston right fielder. Red Sox and the Yankees and one of the amazing quirks of the 1978 American League schedule have not played each other yet. First game will be a week from tonight. Then they'll see each other a lot. They'll go steady for a couple of weeks. Brett gets a sign from Downing. His head on the count. The one-two pitch is swung on a line drive right field. That's going to be in there for a base hit. Landro scores the line, trying to cut it off. He's got it. Evans going for two. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Back-to-back doubles for Boston. They lead eight to seven. as he leads away from second base. The pitch. Throw it inside, ball one. Angels getting a right-hander ready. Paul Hartzell in the bullpen. We're in the sixth inning. Boston eight, the Angels seven, both sides nine hits. The curveball is way outside, ball two. One of the things that that big close left field wall will do to left-handers is make you pitch delicately, and then sometimes you get behind, you have to throw a strike, and they're sitting on your pitches and really take good cut. Hobson ready to swing 2-0 oh. with Evans at second. No one out. Boston six. Pitch taken for a strike. 2-1. Boston 
Watson with the best record in baseball. 39 wins and only 19 losses. They lead the Yankees by six. The Angels, 30 wins, 27 losses, but they're only one and a half out of first place in the West. The pitch, serve off, popped up, playable. First baseman fairly in foul territory. He makes the catch, leaning back to his right as the wind brought it towards their territory. So Hobson fouls out, unable to move the runner to third, and with one out, Rick Burleson steps up. Right-handed hitting shortstop has a single, fly to center, and then fly to deep center. A good one-handed catch made by Bostock right against the wall. Ken Brett looks in, gets a sign from his catcher downing as Evans leads from second base. Brett says yes to the sign, looks to second. And the pitch. That ball over but low, 1-0. and oh. On deck is Fred Lynn. Big hitters in the game. Evans with a three-run homer and an RBI double driving in four. Joe Rudy, three for three to knock in three. The pitch. Outside, ball two. Fred Lynn with a three-run blast. The left field, the left-handed hitter, as he homered the left field in Anaheim Stadium to win Boston the ball game in the ninth inning at Anaheim a week ago. So Burleson waits for the 2-0 pitch. Red set, here it comes. Play in the line drive, they hit right field. Landro's going to have a play at the plate. Evans around third. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's way off line. He scores, and on to second goes Burleson. Oh, they had a good shot at Evans. The throw was 30 feet up the third baseline. If Landro throws and he has a great arm anywhere near the plate, Evans is out. As third base coach Eddie Yost took real liberties on Landro on that play, and Boston leads it 9-7. to seven. When Yost was waving Evans home, and Evans with a bad knee does not run well, he appeared to be doing the Angels a favor, but Landro's throw sailed way up the third baseline, and there was no chance to get him. Well, Brett gives up a couple of runs, and on the throw, Burleson is in scoring position, 9-7. to seven. Where will it end? Here's Fred Lynn, one out. Three-round homer in his three trip. He's also flight out, counted out. The pitch, blowing outside. Now Brett falling behind Burleson, 2-0, and, oh, and Burleson just went right with that fastball, lined it to right field. Hartfield continuing to throw in the Angel 10. All is quiet in the Boston half of that right field area. Brett looks back at second of the pitch. Curveball grounded to the court short. Chalk is up with it. His hurry throw just in time. Two away. Lynn out short to first. Brings up designated hitter Jim Rice and also brings Jim Fregosi. Hands stuffed down into the pockets of his warm-up jacket. Onto the field. Crosses the foul line on his way to the mound. And it looks as if he's going to go to the bullpen and counter... Rice with Hartzell, or will he walk Rice and take the chance his left-hander Brett against Jastrzemski? He's asking Brett for ask that question now. Rolson at second base. Two out. Boston with two back in the sixth inning to lead 9-7. Brett stays, and we'll see if Rice hits. Now, that's a tough choice. You walk Jim Rice, and then all you have to do is get Charlie Yosemite out, and he hits left-hander. Rice, a home run away from 20 for the year. And he'll not swing. They're going to walk him intentionally. So apparently that was Brett and Fregosi meeting of the minds, and they have decided to walk right. Rice is over three. Popped up, rounded out, and struck out. Brett walking his first man. Now, but you'll soon hear a cheer as soon as Rice walks because they know they've got King Kyle Yastrzemski winging the bat next. Ball three outside. In the inning, doubles by Brohammer and Evans. Hopkins fouled out to Burleson, singled in a run. Went to second on the throw to the plate. And Lynn has rounded out. Rice walks. Here comes Yastrzemski. is Rudy singled in two runs. He has a 290 average, three home runs, 28 runs batted in. He's rounded twice the grit and walked. Left-hander against left-hander with 
Carlton Fisk do next. Two out, two on, nine to seven, Boston. Brett set. Check the runners, the pitch. Outside ball one, back four. Yes, as he continues his brilliant career, moving up on the all-time list in so many categories. Steps out of the batter's box. He's now 37th all-time in run scored, 30th in total hits, 17th in double, tied with Ted Williams, 17th all-time, 24th in home run. Takes it way outside, ball two, a curve ball. Next with 369 homers. Yosemite is tied for number 24 with Ralph Kiner, and he's only one behind the man in the 23rd spot, the late Gil Hodges. He's 22nd in RBI, just three behind Billy Williams. And an extra base hit. Only 18 men in Major League history have collected more extra base blows than Yaz. And he's just one behind the man in the 18th position, Billy Williams. So you're talking about Hall of Fame names when you compare Yaz's position all time in all those offensive columns. And he's got two mates aboard, and he's waiting for a two-hole pick. And you know he's swinging if he likes it. He's ready. So is Brett. The pitch. Well, and a high pop ball out of play. He got a fastball and took quite a rip. Two and one. Red Sox scoring in bunches. A three in the second, a four in the fourth, and they have two already in the sixth. The Angels have thrown up there a couple of threes, and they've stuck in the first and the sixth inning, along with a singleton in the fifth. Rolson at second. Lays it first. The action pitch two and one. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. A change and Yaz out in front. Tomorrow night, game two of this short two-game series, Chris Knapp, the Angel right-hander, six and four, against right-hander Jim Wright of Boston, making a rare start. Two and two, two on, two out. The pitch is swung on and a bounce to first. Fairly gets a big hop and takes it to the bag and the inning is over. The Red Sox, however, take the lead as they score two runs on three hits and leave a pair. And after six innings in Boston, Red Sox nine, Angel seven. After six offensive innings here at Fenway Park, Boston, the total three this way. Boston nine runs, ten hits, four errors, four left. Angel seven runs, nine hits, one error, eight men granted. Dick Drago, it's his game as he comes out of the pen, and it's Ken Brett's ball game for the Angels. Drago in the seventh inning. Will face Fairly Chalk and Downing. To Ken Berg, Al Wisk, and our producer engineer Dick Nelson from Fenway Park, Boston, on a beautiful summer's evening. Fell out crowd, and they've been thoroughly entertained. This is, if you like pictures battle, well, this is the antithesis. This is just who's going to finally get off the canvas glass and have his hand raised in victory. Let's go to the seventh. Here's Al. All right, Dick, I'm sure if you're an Angel fan, you're wondering one thing right now. What kind of Dick Drago is this on the mound? Is this the new Dick Drago or the old Dick Drago? The old one was a charter member of the Arson Squad when the Angels had difficulty out of the bullpen. And this new one, apparently, is doing well for the Boston Red Sox with a 2-1 and one record, a 1.66 ERA, and six saves to his credit. He faces the Angels in the seventh. The first pitch of fastball away to Ron Fairley, ball one. Fairley in the game has two hits and three trips, a single and a double. The Angels matching the Boston Red Sox with Boston going in front in their half of the six, and they lead nine to seven. Now Fairley requests time and is granted it by home plate umpire Rush Get. If I remind you, the crew tonight has Birmingham over at first base. Dale Ford is at second, and Joe Brinkman at third. The pitch, swing and a miss, mistimed it. Got him on a change, and the count is one and one to Fairley. Ron Bailey, hitting against the kind of pitcher he likes to see a right-hander, has difficulty against left-handed pitching. Statistically, at least. That's primarily due to the fact you don't see it that often because they'll take him out. Swing and a foul back. Counts one and two. The Angels jumping out in front with three runs in the first. They stranded three men also in the first. The Red Sox answered with three in the second. And then had four in the fourth. 
The Angels with one in the fifth and then tied it with three and then half of the sixth. The Red Sox jump back out in front again with two more in the last of the sixth. Nine, seven, Boston. Nobody out, fairly leading off in the seventh. Playing on a high fly ball, playable, medium depth right field. Under it is Evans, and he makes the catch under the night sky. The Valley flies out to the right fielder, Evans. And we remind you that Angel... out and here's John choking up right hand hitter playing in a line drive that is Ripley Yasinski he glides to the line to make the catch Rod Yasinski playing left field like Van Cliver plays the piano he knows every inch of that territory and he just moves over to the line good position on Chalk right off the bat and as a result the line drive out by Dave Chalk and his two going in the seventh with two men retired, here's the catch. The number nine hitter for California, Brian Downing. Dick Greg on the mound, both feet on the rubber. He rocks. Here comes the first pitch. Inside and high, ball one. Downing, one of the few players tonight without a hit. He is flat out, bounced out, and hit into a 6-4-3 double play. One on delivery is up high. One, now it's 2-0 oh to Brian Downing. The Red Sox, and using Greg Gold, he is the third pitcher that they've utilized tonight. Lee started went five, Stanley two-thirds, and now Drago on. He winds the 2-0 pitch inside, downing, checking his swing. Three and all oh to Downing. With two hops, the Red Sox infield back. Hobson back at third. Burleson at short. Rohammer at second. And Scott over at first. Fifth behind the plate, flashing the sign. Let's see if Downing swings 3-0. Oh. The pitch, and he's taking a strike. The Angels need a base runner to get on board and then see what the following hitters can do. Downing taking, and it's 3-1. and one. Rico rocks to the motion. 3-1 pitch. A high ball four. Brian Downing with a two-on walk. Drago, that's the first walk that he has issued. And here's the top of the order, Kenny Landro. Landro's been given a workout in right field. Had difficulty with his throw. The last half inning. Could have gunned the man down at the plate. He has a very strong arm. Strongest arm of the team, but it was too accurate. The throw is 20 feet up the line. And a run scored. Landro offensively has not created a tumble thus far. Drago, a slow set. Down to the waist and the pitch. Back one on the outside corner. It calls strike one. Dick Grego on in relief of Stanley, who in turn relieves Bill Lee. Nine, seven, Boston. Top of the seventh. Fenway Park. The Red Sox, best record in baseball. 20 games above 500. The pitch. Going the line drive. Hit down that line in left field. It'll drop it for the Yusemski. Holding at second base is Downing. A strong throw behind the runner. But Downing retreats to second ahead of the throw. So the Angels with two outs put a pyramid on. As Downing walks, oh, and then Kenny Landro picks up his first oh, hit of the night. A line drive single to left field. And here's Bob Rich. Rich, his first three times up, retired. He grounded out, and he popped out the short twice. His last time up, the single. Bobby with a chance to improve upon the Angels' chances as they trail by pair runs. Two out, two men on, seventh inning, the pitch. Playing on a high fly ball, playable, shallow right field. Coming on is Evans, going on and dropping the ball as the second baseman, Rohammer. One run scores as Downing comes in. Landro holds over third base. Fritz goes to second base. And the air will be charged to Brohammer, who went out as Brohammer and Scott and the right fielder Evans converged on the ball. Brohammer tried to pick it up over his shoulder and he dropped the ball. So the Angels stay alive. A run scores. They are within one run of the Boston Red Sox on the air by Jack Brohammer. 
Actually, it should have been Dwight Evans' ball, Al. He was there and could have caught it, but Brohammer calling all the way. And with the wind, carrying the ball back toward right center, it just kind of carried enough that it went off his fingertips. And Landro may have twisted an ankle. He could have scored with two outs. That ball hit high enough, and with Landro's speed from first base, he should have been able to score on it. But uh, stopped at third, and now Rick Smith, the Angels trainer, assistant trainer, and Jim Fregosi, third base coach John McNamara out there to see if he's all right. But uh, the game should be even again. That's five Boston errors, and yet Boston still leads 9-8. And this is the charm of Fenway Park. Of course, you're always in the game, but it's always generally a wild game. And an intentional pass up coming along with Boston with first base off second time in a row. Uh, Don Zimmer has ordered up an intentional pass to Boston. He bypassed him in the sixth to pitch to Joe Rudy. And Rudy came up with two RBIs and a single. So Dick Grego dealing outside to a left hand hitting Bostock, the right hander on the mound, the pitch to the right hander, Joe Rudy. Grego again sets and deals outside. And that's ball four as Bostock underhands the bat to the Fungo Circle dealer. Let's pause for station identification. This is Angels Radio 78. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Inning of play. Boston, Massachusetts, Fenway Park, the Angels bump for the bumper trailing by a run. Nine to eight. They have Kenny Landro at third, Bobby Gritch at second, Ryman Bostock at first, and Joe Rudy at the plate. Well, Rudy in the game is three for three. He has doubled, he has two singles, and he has walked. Rudy with a close stance, right hand hitter. Leaning at the plate. Grego leaning on the mound, looking in for the sign from Carlton Fitz. Still looking now, Rudy says, that's too much time for me. And he steps up, requesting time from Get. Now, Drago and Rudy now in a battle of nerves as the Angels try to move back to at least tie or perhaps take the lead. They are down by a run, 9-8 to eight in the seventh. And again, Rudy says the heck with it and gets it. Waves his hand and say, well, come on. You know, you might as well throw the ball sooner or later. Now going out is Carlton Fitz to talk to Dick Drago with the paternal hand placed on his shoulder. The mask split up on top of his head. And now the Red Sox shortstop Burleson also in. There is activity now in the bullpen again for the Boston Red Sox. Bill Campbell... The expensive release pitcher, free agent obtained by Boston. He is warming up. Bases loaded for the Angels. Rudy still waiting on the first pitch. Drago on the mound. Thus far, has been not too anxious to deliver it. The glove slowly to the belt. The pitch. A high strike. Looked like it might have been on the strike zone. A fastball. Oh, and one to Rudy. Landro at third. Bobby Gritch at second. Lyman Bostock at first. On the mound, Dick Drago. The third Red Sox pitcher used tonight. 9-8 Boston in the seventh. Rudy getting set at the plate. Close stand. Waving the wood back and forth. Drago set. The kick in the pitch. Up high. And it's 1-1. One one. Jim Fregosi yelling from the angel drag out. That's the same place as the one you just called a drag. He's really sparking at rough gift. First one sure looks high. Now, Dick Drago has six saves thus far. A sparkling ERA. But he is well aware of what can happen in Fenway Park. He told us last year when he was an angel and came to this park, the world give it and the world take it away. Drago set. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Kind of an outside slider. Now, Drago now ahead. One and two. Rudy steps out of the batter's box. Pounds the dirt from his spike. He glances down the third base to Coach McNamara. There's Kenny Landro off the bag in foul territory. Bridge off about five, six, seven steps over his second. Marvin Bostock clapping his hands. And off to the edge of that quarter circle, the cutout in the diamond over at first base. Rudy at the plate. He has choked up a bit on the bat with two strikes. 
Drago set. The one-two pitch inside. Two and two to Rudy. Fenway Park, the scene of this game between the Angels and the Red Sox. A packed house on a gorgeous night. The wind blowing out. The temperature game time, 70 degrees. A strong wind blowing out toward that green monster in left field. And a lot of digits littering the scoreboard tonight. Nine, eight Boston. Ten hits for each team. Five errors by the Red Sox. One error by the Angels. Bases loaded. A 2-2 count to Joe Rudy. Two outs in the seventh. Drago sets. The slow set to the belt and the plate. Swing and a tapper foul wide of the first baseline. And the runners now will all retreat to their respective bases. Landville back to third and Gritch back to second and Bostock back to first. Well, the tension continues in Fenway Park where the Angels are trying to get off on the right foot on a 14-game road trip. The Boston Red Sox are trying to begin their longest homestand of the year in the correct fashion. Boston, a team that's been hot, 20 games above the 500 mark, 39 and 19, the best record in Major League Baseball. The Angels, three games above 500, and a game and a half out of first place in the West. Rigo set. The base is loaded. 2 2 pitch inside as Rudy has to lean back and then back pedal out of the way. The count now full. Nowhere else to go for Drago or for Rudy. And the crowd revving up in Boston. Joe Rudy slowly making his way back toward the batter's box. A tug of the helmet. Now gripping the bat. Planting that back foot. Drago, his pivot foot on the rubber. Time call until Rudy gets established. He's ready to go. Rago looking for the sign from Carlton Fist. Base is loaded. Two outs. Angels down. 9-8. The pitch. Swing and a high fly ball. Playable. Right field. Evan Hunter looking up at him. Takes the catch. Rago touched up for a run in the seventh. But he retires the side with the bases loaded. And gets out of a very big jam in the seventh inning. And at the end of six and a half in Boston, it's the Red Sox nine and the Angels eight. The attendance announced tonight at Fenway Park, the capacity is 33,513, and they're not far from that. 31,612 on hand to watch the Angels and the Boston Red Sox in the 9-8 game with the Red Sox with that one run in. Now I'd just like to know where those 2,000 empty seats are. I can't find any. That's true. Great baseball fans in Boston. And they're attracted by a team that is headed to a ballpark that produces high-scoring, exciting games, and they're getting one tonight. They've always had competitive teams, and they've built around far to take advantage of this very intimate park here at Fenway. They get their stars. They keep them for a long, long time. Stars is been testimony to that. His teammate Carl Francis will lead off in the seventh. He'll be followed by George Scott. He went away to Milwaukee, then returned to Boston, and then Jack Crowhammer, who's been both hero and go tonight. A new pitcher for the Angels in the seventh. It's Paul Hartfield relieving Ken Brett. The first pitch is a little high, and it's ball one. Carlton Fisk in the game today is 0 for 3. Hartfield winds in the pitch. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Hartzell's record, 1-4, and four, is ERA 3.59. He has five saves to his credit. And, of course, yesterday in Anaheim, pitched the final two innings in that victory over the New York Yankees. This late, Marshall delivers, breaking ball low and outside, scooped up by Downing out of the dirt, 2-1. and one. The Angels, three in the first, one in the fifth, three in the sixth, and one in the seventh. The Boston Red Sox, three in the second, four in the fourth, two in the sixth. The pitch. Swing and a high chopper hit to the shortstop. Dave Chalk, he goes across the diamond in time, and there's one gone for Boston in the seventh. Now Carlton Fisk is tied, put it to book six three, and here's the boomer. Boomer. George Scott. 
Scott has not hit a home run tonight, but he's done some damage. He has two for three with a pair of singles to right field. Scott holds that bat high and takes the strike on the outside corner of breaking ball, 0-1. Scott off to a slow start, only three home runs through the first two and a half months. Swing and a fly ball, hit toward the line in right field, over to make a running catch is Kenny Landro. He easily puts it away, two gone. The Angels, although they have scored nine runs, checked that eight runs tonight. They have left a lot of men on the base. They were put down in the first after they scored three runs and left with the bases loaded. They left three more in the sixth and three more in the seventh. One in the third, one in the fifth. The Boston Red Sox have been more efficient. They've stranded only four. That's one on the inside corner. And Rohammer lifts his arms out of the way. Rohammer has been hot at the plate, not so hot defensively. A costly error the last half inning. But at the plate, he is three for three with a pair of singles and a double. And Rohammer now is hit safely in 11th straight game. Breaking ball is inside. And Brohammer at the plate, 1 1. Boston Red Sox clinging to a one run lead. 9 to 8. The pitch inside. 2 and 1 to Brohammer. The Red Sox flexing their muscles with a pair of three run home runs. And that has helped out in this game. Fastball misses the outside edge. 3 and 1. A three-run home run by Evans in the second. And then a three-run blast to the opposite field by Fred Lynn in the fourth. Both into the net over the Green Monster. Swing a bounding ball to the first baseman. A high chopper at the eyes. Barely underhand to Hartzell in time. But it's a one, two, three inning. A rarity tonight. One, two, three. The Boston Red Sox score. I don't think anyone knows how to handle that. At the end of seven, it's nine to eight Boston. Offense plus tonight in Fenway Park where it's 9 to 8 Boston. The Red Sox, 9 runs, 10 hits, 5 errors. The Angels, 8 runs, 10 hits, and 1 error. It's the top of the eighth inning of play, and the Angels will send up Jackson, Redmond, and then Fairley. And we bring to the mic Dick Enberg. Thank you, Al. Dick Drago. It's his ball game, and he's pitched very well for Boston all season long. He certainly is throwing much harder than when he performed as an Angel last year. He was traded to Baltimore, one for one for right-hander Dyer Miller, and then played out as Contract and signed with the Boston Red Sox. Ron Jackson will strike the eighth inning, a 90 score. Boston in front of pitch. A strike on the inside corner. Jackson a single, line drive, double play, safe in the fuelist choice and hit by a pitch. Second to Rod Carew in the American League batting derby with a 357 average entering the game. Right hander against right hander. The rock back, and here's the pitch by Drago. Swing and a foul tip. 0 and 2. Merv Retman on deck, and then Ron Fairley. Schedule here in the top of the eighth. Each side with 10 hits. Boston, the number one fielding team in the American League, has committed five errors tonight, but still lead by one. Of the Angels, eight runs, seven on earth. Drago gets his sign from Calvin Fitz. Rocks back, and here comes the pitch. High and outside, one and two. Drago and Fitz with Hopson at third, Brolson at short, Brohammer and Scott on the right side of the Boston infield. Yaz in left, Lynn in center, Evans in right. 31,652 paid here at Fenway as Drago's 1-2 pitch on its way. Almost hit it did. Nick, Ron Jackson, he's aboard. He is on. Hesitating with Russ Getz. And then finally says, yep, you're on. No argument from Calvin Fitz. So Jackson, who steps into every pitch anyway, gets nicked in the left shoulder by Nick Drago. And the Angels have the leadoff man on here in the eighth inning. You think circuses are fun and carnival. You've got to enjoy baseball at Fenway. Dick Drago with Merv Rettman settling in uh, watches John McNamara the Angel third base coach go back to his position after a visit with Rettman see if the Angels play the tie of the game here in the eighth inning Rettman is hitless tonight over three he was up there with the bases loaded in the sixth inning and fly to center field that was Drago who got that out right in there settles at the waist hits to Rettman inside a fastball he was not putting Fairley is on deck Angels led by throw. Joe Rudy's three hits. 
Jack Brohammer with three hits for Boston. But the big swing have come from Dwight Evans, a three-run homer and an RBI double, and Fred Lenz, who's only hit tonight as a three-run homer. Nine to eight, Boston. Drago, veteran right-hander, uses that little stair-step Teon system as he gets to the waist, the pitches outside and low. Gets started to call to the strike, and got his hand caught on the chest protector. Two and oh the count. Alan Ripley and Bill Campbell are throwing in the Boston bullpen. Two right-handers. Campbell, of course, the ace of the Boston pen last year. Jackson, good runner at first base. Not holding him on. 2-0 oh, the count on Murr Ruffman. The infield set for two. They go deliberately at the waist. The pitch. Inside corner. A fat ball. Ruffman throws his hands up and discussed. He thought that was ball three. 2-1 the count. Carlton Fisk hops out of the crouch and uh, kind of walks out a little muscle pull in his legs and gets cramped sitting down there so long. And Drago does take a lot of time between pitches. Your legs can go to sleep on you if you're a catcher in that squat. The action picks two and one. Tying run at first, no one out in the eighth inning. Boston nine, the Angels eight. Drago's ready. Over the shoulder, look at the runner at first. Here comes the pitch. Swinging a foul out of play. That's up on the roof on the first base side. Two balls, two strikes to Redmond, who walked in the first inning, safe on an error in the third, out on a good play by Brolson in the hole in the fifth, and flied to shallow center to Fred Lynn with the bases loaded in the sixth. The Angels have had plenty of opportunity. And with all the hits and runs scored, the key statistic in the game, left on base, Angels 11, Boston 4. Jackson has his lead. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a little ground ball up the middle. Up with it, Burleson. He goes to second for one, and that's all they'll get. As Dave at first on the field, his choice is Redman. Jammed on the play, didn't get it hard enough for the double play. That brings up Ron Fairley, the veteran first baseman, has a two-run single, and he doubled in the sixth inning and scored. Two for four for Fairley. First down a solid job, as always, with the Angels, and even with that long distance to right field, and it's a tough right field, 380 behind the right fielder. If you pull the ball sharply, you can get a fairly easy home run, but you have to hit it about 15 feet from that foul ball because that wall angles sharply down into the corner. Infield, set for two, so that gives fairly a hole on the right side to pull the ball. Scott holding on Retman. The Angels uh, lose a half step in speed at first in the exchange of Jackson and Retman. Set by Drago. At the waist, the pitch. Frank, outside corner, a good fat ball. Final, the Baltimore Orioles have won their 11th in a row, 5-4 to four against Seattle. 5-8-0 and oh for the Birds, 4 runs, 10 hits for the Mariners. Don Stanhouse, in relief of uh, Tippy Martinez, got the save. Martinez soon won the winner, Colburn 1-5 and five the loser. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a foul tip, caught by Fisk, and right-hander Drago quickly in front on the count, two strikes on Fairley. They had 13,212 to welcome Baltimore home from a great road trip. They were 9-1 and one on the road, and they win tonight 5-4 against Seattle. They've gone from three games under 500 to eight above in the last two weeks. Drago hands his time from this. Bretman, the safe lead at first base. Here's the pitch. High, a fastball, two and one, one and two, one ball, two strikes. They should join us late. The Angels got three in the first off starter, Bill Lee. But the Red Sox came back with a three-run home run by Dwight Evans off starter Tom Griffin to tie it in the second. Then in the fourth, when the Angels muffed a double play ball that would have gotten Griffin out of the inning, the Red Sox went on to score four, three of them on Fred Lynn's home run. Angels one in the fifth, three in the sixth. To tie the game at seven, but the Red Sox scored two in the sixth. The Angels back with one in the seventh. It's now 9-8. The pitch. Swing and a shot by the diving throw hammer into right field for a base hit. Holding at first was Redmond to make sure the ball wasn't caught. He now goes to second, and the Angels have the tying and go ahead. Runners aboard with one out in the eighth inning as Fairley sends a low line drive just out of the reach to the glove side of Brohammer for his third hit of the night. Here's Dave Chalk, a bun single, a ground out safe on an air, and he lined out the Yaz and left his last time up. Now the Angels get a little nervous in the crowd of Fenway partisans. Don Zimmer, right up on that dugout step, turning out at Dick Drago. 
chalk up on the handle of the bat. Not much power. Just tries to move the ball around, keep it in play. Shallow and right is Evans. A base hit to right. I don't think Redmond could score. Hugging the line and shallow at third is Hobson. Hit by Drago. On the outside corner for a strike. But Drago jumped in front of Fairley 0-2, but the veteran worked it to 1-2 and and then rifled a single. Redman in scoring position. At second base. The Angels now about hit Boston 11-10. Brock at 291 hit around the season. Choked up about as much as anyone in the league now. Way up on the handle. Drago ready. The pitch. Outside, a breaking ball, one and one. Brian Downing would be next. Again, the Angels without Carney Lansford and his replacement from the Pacific Coast League, Dave McAmer, a speedster. He's stolen 20 bases already this year and leads the PCL in hitting 380. Will probably report here in Boston to the club tomorrow. So the Angels are without Lansford and Baylor with a hamstring pull. Maybe their two best power right-handed hitters in this ballpark. 1-1 pitch. Low, 2-1. That's really short-changing yourself to be without that kind of stock in Fenway. And to that, Terry Humphrey's sore shoulder, the Angels catcher, and he's on the bench. Now, Jim Fregosi like dealing out the cards, a seven-card poker, and you only get five cards. Still try to beat the opposition. Slight exaggeration, but that must be how Fregosi feels. Runners at first and second. Two on hit. Chalk fouls it away. Off to the right. And lands in a photographer well off the skybox section and skips up into that two, three rows of seats that accommodates the man that stands here at Fenway, but basically the only one tiered park in the major league. Left hander Dave LaRoche starts to throw in the angel bullpen. And the two right handers, Ripley and Campbell, still at work behind Rago for Boston. Two balls, two strikes. Redman leads from second, barely off first. Drago at the waist, the pitch. Outside, ball three. He went three and two with the bases loaded to Rudy in the last inning before Rudy flied out. And the drama in Fenway tonight has been superb. No matter which side you're pulling for, I know many of you fans listening early morning hours in other parts of the world, this is a baseball delight. Like sitting yourself down at the table and they just keep bringing the food, all your favorites. Nine to eight, Boston. Drago backs off the rubber. Redman being alerted by McNamara. You got to hurry now. Those good outfielders for Boston on a base hit. Barely off first. And the three to pitch. Low, and the bases are loaded. One out. Chalk to first. Barely to second. And Redmond to third. And the Angels have had the bases loaded time and time again this evening. Three times ending an inning with three men aboard. And they've got them drunk again. Here comes Tony Salida to bat for Brian Downing. Salida, the powerful Samoan, who has done a great job coming off the bench. And has been the Angels' top ten hitter. He's up there with one out. Not much speed, so he's a good double play man, but is as strong as anyone in that angel dugout and has the power even if fool to go to left field and kiss the monster. Lifetime against Boston. Salida is hitting 350. And as soon as he's introduced, Zimmer... Comes out of the dugout before he gets to the foul line. He waves the right hand, signals he wants Bill Campbell to come in from the bullpen. So Campbell will be the fourth Boston pitcher of the night. Here's the spot where Tom Berkmeyer, the left-hander, was not throwing. Never had two right-handers, so he cannot counter with a left-hander. He's going to go with Campbell, who has an excellent screwball, and is tough on left-hander. So Drago goes out, picks himself out of two bases loaded jams. One left for him by Bob Stanley in the sixth and one of his own in the seventh and he leaves with the bases loaded. As Campbell is carted in from the right center field bullpen area. With a break in the action, let's call on Al Witt. All right, Dick, you can take advantage of the last walk to Chalk was the seventh given up by Boston pitching plus two hit batters. So that's nine more base runners plus five errors plus 11 hits. To give the Angels eight runs, they'll start good enough to be in front. 
Boston has nine, and Bill Campbell, the bearded right-hander, begins tuning up with Cantor Calvin Pitt. He has a good screw ball, and around the batting cage before the game tonight, some of the Red Sox players commenting on what a good screw he had in Seattle his last outing. So he got four men in two uh, perfect relief innings. The tying run for the Angels with one out is represented by Merv Rettman standing a third in conversation with his coach, John McNamara. Ron Fairley, the veteran, is at second base. And Dave Chalk at first. Tony Salida, who has been hitting around 400 off the bench, but his season average doesn't reflect that because overall he's hitting 245. One home run and nine runs better in. Campbell, the ace of the bullpen for Boston the last couple of years, although he's had some rough outings this year, and his ERA reflects that, 5.40, base is full, infield looking for two, the pitch to Salida, high ball one. Campbell, two wins, check that, his ERA is higher than that, 7.24 for Campbell, two wins and four losses, he saved two, so he has not pitched that well, he's only worked in 13 and two-thirds innings. 9-8 Boston. Salida away. Campbell to the plate. Kruge outside and low. Ball two. Two balls. No strikes. And now Salida checks with his third base coach to see if that green light is flashing. The outfield playing Salida with respect. Deep and right is Evans. Right center a couple of steps is Lynn. Back toward the warning path and left in front of the scoreboard. Yes, empty. Infield set for two. The 2-0 pitch by Campbell. Low. Ball three. So now, Campbell, in a terrible bind, with the bases loaded, has to throw strikes, down 3-0, or walk in the tying run. Meanwhile, Salida, if he wanted to, could be sitting on a pitch that he could really drive 3-0. Fergosi's a gambling manager, he's shown that already, the 3-0 pitch. Strike across the letters, and barely throw. Oh, that was close to being ball four, right across the lettering of angels on the front of the great uniform. Campbell nervously goes to the rosin bag, throws it aside, fidgets with his cap, wheels his arm over his head, now rests that right foot on the front edge of the rubber. Rettman at third, barely at second, and Chalk at first lead away. One out, 9-8 in the eighth inning, the 3-1 pitch. Outside, and the game is tied! That is only the second earned run scored by the Angels in the game, and... You almost have to bite your tongue saying earned about that one because it comes around only one single, a hit batter, and a couple of walks. The run will be charged to Dick Drago as Rettman walks home with a ninth run. A 9-9 nine, nine tie, and Ken Landro steps up, the young left-handed hitting right fielder, singled his last time up. He's one for four, and he scored two runs. Good speed, a tough man to double up. Salida at first, Chalk at second, Fairley at third, on field toward right, Campbell sets and delivers. Swing and a miss, and Landro, good cut at a breaking ball. And has one home run and seven runs batted in. Starts tonight at 247. So the Angels led in the first inning when they scored three, but after Boston tied it in the third, the Angels have been playing catch-up ever since, and finally are back even at nine. The pitch, right down the middle, and Landro took a fastball right there. Two strikes on Kenny. And a final in from New York, Ron Guidry has done it again. He's 10-0. He shut out Oakland on three hits. New York, two. Oakland, nothing. So that plays an important role in what happens here tonight. The pitch. Clean it up. He's took him out. A screw ball gets Landro, and there's two away. Base is still loaded for Bobby Gritton. Well, Landro got the one pitch. Of a group of three that was set to hit and caught looking on that. That was the second pitch, the fastball down the middle. And a hit on the count on two. Campbell gave him that tough screwball, and Landro couldn't find it. So Grit steps in. A hit tonight, he hit safely in five in a row. He's one for five. Eighth inning, and Grit is up for the sixth time in the game. Nine nine tie. Two out. The Angels with the bases full. Grit waiting. Campbell kicks and deals. Curveball, high ball one. Grit, a tough man. He'll make you throw strikes. Again, Yankees two, and Oakland nothing. Matt Keough, another fine pitching job in, de- in defeat. Except that Heverlow was given the loss in relief of Keough, two and two. 1-0 pitch. Swinging a foul back. 
Get Reese Tennant, the winner. Heverlo, the loser, 2-2. Two two. They had 27,721 in New York. The Yankee runs came on home runs by Randolph, his third. Nettles, his fourth. 2 nothing New York. The Yankees are six behind Boston. Oakland is lost. If the Angels could win tonight, they'd be only a half game out of first place. Currently tied for second with the Texas Rangers one and a half out. Another final. Cubs at Cincinnati, three to two. Three six and zero for Cubs. Two four and two for Cincinnati. Chicago, a game ahead of Philadelphia in the National League East, wins at Cincinnati three two. Here's the pitch to Grit. Deck swing foul, and it goes off to the right as Grit trying to keep the bat away, and that ball hits the handle and him to the box seat railing. One ball, two strikes to Grit. Foster hit his, they say seventh, picked that his 14th home run of the year, George Foster for Cincinnati. There wasn't enough as Russell, eight and four, beat Bonham, seven and one. First loss for Bill Bonham, 30,190 at Cincinnati. Here, a 9-9 tie, base is loaded with Angels. Two out in the eighth inning, and Bill Campbell ahead on the count to Bobby Grit, one and two. Grit has three home runs and 16 runs batted in. He's up on the handle of the bat, trying to guide the plate, hit one hard someplace. Infield all deep. Hopson deep guarding the line at third. The outfield straight away and deep. Time called as Campbell takes too much time and Fitz is going to go out and make sure that he and his right-handed reliever are in sync. A hit batter, a single by Fairley, and a couple of walks have tied the game here on the ninth inning. The Angels have scored in each of the last four innings. After three in the first inning, shut out till the fifth when they got one, three in the sixth, one in the seventh, one here in the eighth. And we start over again. The Angels with another glorious chance. Base is full. Great cap with Lyman Bostock do next. One and two to count. Campbell staring, staring, staring. Now he has his time. The low target and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Swing three. Base is loaded. They've stranded 14 men after seven and a half, nine, nine times. Right fielder Dwight Evans leads off the eighth for Boston, takes a breaking ball low, ball one. Hartful working quickly the pitch. Swing and a shot to third, backhanded by Jackson in third territory. The throw across is in time. Good he play. Boston fans applaud the visiting third baseman Ron Jackson who made a dive to the line to backhand that ball in normal conditions that's a two base hit but in a tie game in the late innings that third baseman is sitting right on the line and even then Jackson barely got it as Evans ripped it on one hop first pitch to Hobson outside a breaking ball so Evans two for four four RBIs and try to get something going in the eighth Hobson grounds it weakly to short charged by Chalk he throws across the fairly two away Paul Hartzell has been the most effective pitcher of the game. He's been in for an inning and two-thirds and has retired five men in order. Burleson takes a pass ball low. Ball one, the leadoff man for the Red Sox tonight. Has singled twice and flies twice to center. Once to very deep center field. He's not going to run. Marshall pitches a fastball in there. One and one. A 9-9 tie in Boston. Incredible stat, though, as we repeat ourselves, and at the risk of doing that, Angels 14 left on base, Boston 4. The pitch, swing and a miss. Good, hard sinker in on the hand. Uh, Rick Wilson, it's one and two. Terry Humphrey taking over behind the plate for the Angels despite the fact that he has a very painful sore shoulder. Wilson wants to see the baseball. Hartzell lobs it into his catcher and Russ Getz will examine it. Veteran plate umpire notes the flaw and puts a new one in play. Wilson with a good eye. did spot something. Wilson waving the wood. The pitch. Swinging a shot to third, and there's Jackson playing deep right on the line to glove it and throw him out. So the positioning of the third baseman paid off. Two hard hit balls, both of would have been hit earlier in the game, to come out as Jackson fields that hot corner splendidly. Three up, three down, after eight, a 9-9 tie. 
Bill Campbell warming up for this catcher, Calvin Fisk, in the ninth inning. The right-hander will face Bostock, Rudy, and Jackson of the Angels. When Campbell, with a bases loaded, struck out Landro and Grits to end the eighth inning. Those were the first two Boston strikeouts of the evening. Bill Lee started when five innings allowed four unearned runs, six hits, walked two, struck out nine. Bob Stanley, two-thirds of an inning, three runs, one earned, three hits, two walks. Dick Drago, an inning and two-thirds, two runs, one earned, two hits, three walks, and a man. And now Bill Campbell, who walked one and struck out two, three men he faced, coming in for the bases loaded in the eighth inning. Bostock, obvious reports on Bostock to the Boston skipper Zimmer, try not to pitch to him. And the Red Sox have avoided that best they can. They've walked him intentionally the last two times up. He has a single and three trips. A 12-game hitting streak for Bostock. Campbell delivers inside with a breaking ball. Former teammates for the Minnesota Twins. Bill Campbell and Lyman Bostock both playing out their contracts and signing rich new deals with their club presently. Screw ball line to right field, but it's going to stay up, and Evans is there to make the catch. Bostock out to the right fielder Dwight Evans. That was a screw ball. He read it well. Up and says up into Campbell as he goes by him on his way to the third base dugout. Joe Rudy, in the first inning, lined a double off the base of the wall in left field to drive it around. Later scored himself. Walked in the third. Singled in the fifth. When they walked Bostock intentionally with two on and lead. Six to load the bases. He promptly singled the center field to drive in two more. And then with the bases loaded in the seventh and a 3-2 pitch, he flied to right. Three for four for Rudy. Three RBI, give him 13 for the year. Joe has two home runs. Campbell will throw up a long one now and then. The pitch in there, a game. Rudy thought it was inside. Minnesota Toronto has been postponed. Rain in Ontario. Milwaukee leading Detroit 7 4 in the bottom of the eighth inning at Tiger Stadium, Detroit. We told you the Yanks shut out Oakland 2 0. Baltimore bested Seattle 5 4. The set by Campbell. And the one strike kick. Swing and a top of the short. Burleson charges, has an ugly hop, has to throw in a hurry, and gets his man by a step. Lead on with Burleson, the short stop, and there's two gone in the top of the ninth inning. Ron Jackson is one for three. Single to score in the first. Lined into a double play. A vicious line drive back to the mound of Bill Lee in the third inning. Himself has been stabbed and turned into two. Saving a field of choice, and the last two times up, he's been hit by a pitch. At Kansas City, the Royals have just scored four times in the seventh inning to tie the game at five against Texas, but Al Oliver hit a solo home run in the eighth, so it's now 6-5, Texas top of the eighth at KC. one nothing. Chicago over Cleveland after seven. The White Sox are getting great pitching, but they've made a change in the top of the eighth. The pitch to Jackson. Change is low, ball one. National League, Atlanta beats St. Louis 2-1. to one. Cuts over Cincinnati 3-2. to two. Pittsburgh has a 3 nothing lead at Houston in the sixth. Philadelphia trails the Dodgers 6-4 to four after eight innings in Los Angeles. Jackson takes the ball, too. Dusty Baker hit a grand slam home run in that game. Greg Lezinski has hit two homers, 14 for the year. Monday hit his 12th, mid his ninth. So long balling in Dodger Stadium and L.A. in front. 6-4, fills up top of the ninth. No score, met the San Diego bottom of the second, and the Giants beat Montreal 1-0. This afternoon. The 2-0 pitch coming up to Jackson. High and inside, up under the chin, 3-0. Jackson was swinging, so he was really stepping into that one, looking for something he could yank out of here. Almost led with his chin. Three balls, no strikes. Merv Rutman would be next. Wind continues to blow toward left, not quite as strong as early in the game. Swinging a high fly ball to left field. Routine, yes, coming in for it. And he makes the catch. Jackson, Chalk, 
Rich and Fairley on the infield. The men at the corner, Fairley at first and Jackson at third, right on the line. The outfield of Rudy, Bostock, and Landro left to right. Crowd alive in Boston. And a ground ball right side. Fairley can't get it. It's in the right field. Lynn turns and holds at first base. Now we told you that Fairley was right on the line. That was a routine out earlier in the game. But it trickled through for a base hit here in the ninth. Because it worked the other way for Boston in the eighth inning when two smashes to third and came out because Jackson was positioned there. So LaRoche greeted with a base hit off the bat of Lynn. Jim Rice comes up. He's 0 for 3 with a walk. Now Boston has its best hitter, the Major League top home run and RBI producer at the plate in the bottom of the ninth inning. 31,652 paid. It's a sellout when you consider there are a couple of thousand guests here of the Boston management. They've seen a great game, and all they can ask for now is a win in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's a 9 9 tie. Lynn, a good base runner, the pitch. Rice going to bust, takes the strike. So, Don Zimmer asking his big home run hitter to swing around and sacrifice, but it might just as quickly take that butt off and let him swing away, figuring that the Angels would give him a high fastball, gets that, and drive it out of here. Jackson creeping in from third, barely holding on, let it burst. The pitch, he's swinging and fouls it away. He got the high fastball, but was a little late pulling the trigger. first base. The winning run, no one out, bottom of the ninth. Nine runs, 11 hits for each side. Infield looking for the double play. Lynn has a bigger lead this time. LaRoche to the plate. High, a fastball, one and two. Arsenal worked two perfect innings, getting the side out in order, the seventh and the eighth. Working the ninth inning. Lynn has treated him with a ground ball single. The one-two pitch. Lynn takes it just inside. Checked his swing, and the ball breaking sharply down and in. Just off the corner. Two and two. Chris Knapp, six and four against right-handed Jim Wright. Two and oh, Boston. In the second and final game of this brief set tomorrow night. Two-two pitch. High ball three. So the count has gone from two strikes to three and two. We'll see if the Red Sox play a little run and hit. LaRoe is kicking at the rubber. Now looks and gets this eye from Terry Humphrey. Lynn leads away from first base. LaRoe at the wait. Here's the pitch. High ball four. extremely well. Checked with his third base coach, Eddie Yost, to see if he's up there to bust. Yaz has rounded out three times and walked. Now Boston, literally unbeatable at home, 22 and 4, with a great chance to win it here in the bottom of the ninth. LaRoche checks the runners, Yaz squares and takes it away inside, ball one. So LaRoche has that plate jumping on him. the winning run is second. Wright is crossing over at first. He has squared the body. He gave himself up immediately. Swinging this time and takes the strike. One and one. Oh my. With Jackson creeping in from third and fairly tied at first. And Yaz got a good breaking ball but didn't go after it. One and one to count. Out field straight away for Yaz. Wind blowing out toward left. Runners lead first and second. No one out. He squares the butt. Bunts it toward third. LaRoche has to play at third. And he doesn't get him. Everyone is safe. Oh, my. Jackson and Pagosi. LaRoche all around. Third base umpire Joe Brinkman. He called him safe. Pagosi throws his hands in the air in disgust. But it was an excellent bunt by the veteran Yastrzemski. LaRoche had only one play. The 
ball fielded going toward the third base foul line. And so he was in position to throw to third, but they didn't get him. The umpire rules safe, and you've got to give Yusinski a bunt single. That's how good he is. Now it's going to take some miracle pitching by LaRoche not to lose in the ninth inning. As Boston has the bases loaded, no one out. The infield is in. The outfield is in. Time is called, and Johnny Pesky goes out to say something to Jim Rice. Carlton Fisk, the right-handed hitting catcher, is fouled out, struck out, a deep out to center, and a ground out. Now, the Angels, who have had the bases loaded four times at the end of an inning, haven't been able to get that big blow, find themselves now with Boston enjoying a bases loaded situation and no one out in the bottom of the ninth. LaRoche is not going to use the windup. This right-handed batter, the pitch, way outside, ball one. Field in the outfield, their players to the plate. There's softball depth in the outfield. Hoping they'll stop a line drive, a fly ball, it's over their head, they're going to go on a sacrifice fly anyway. The pitch, outside ball two. Lay on the winning run at third, right to second, yes yeah, at first. The Angels have a fourth, what of course they would like to see is that ground ball home to first double play. But LaRoche has to throw a strike first. Single by Lynn, a walk, and a bunt single to load the bases for Boston. Here in the last of the ninth inning, a 9-9 tie. LaRoche gets his sign from Humphrey. The pitch. Playing a ground ball. Fair. Boston hits off Lynn, 10 9 As this single passer. One run, two hits. No errors, and three left in the bottom of the ninth inning as Carlton Fitz lands a single between Jack in the bag of third, and Boston wins again at home, 10 to 9 in a thrilling ball game with the totals. Here's Al. All right, Dick, the Red Sox, 10 runs, 13 hits, 5 errors, 7 men left on base for the Angels, 9 runs, 11 hits, 1 error, and 14 men left on base. The winning pitcher, Bill Campbell, he's 3 and 4. The losing pitcher, Dave LaRoche, 5 and 3.